T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Shake it back! Does that feel good? Yeah! <laughs> What's We're up, back. Shaking Makers? That gets me fired up all the time, all day and night. Um, <laughs> Somebody's got some playback. Yeah, it's me. He's um, watching what? himself. Go figure. <laughs> he ain't got to watch himself do much in a long time. So this <laughs> big deal. <laughs> big deal. Oh, and now he's muted. And now he's muted. Yeah, you're muted no, now, Stevie. The last job. time I saw y'all... <laughs> There he I is. may or You're may back. not have been extremely too many wines in. So I feel like I haven't seen y'all in a month. All right, full, full disclosure, uh, I'm on my family vacation uh, at, on the North Carolina coast, and this is not full of water. Oh, wee! Several today, so. So you're the me of last Speak, week. Speaking the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. <laughs> oh, I don't um, This is episode 19. Uh, I thought it was 20. Nope, nope. I did some, some it is not 20. It's 19. Mm. Man, I fucked up. I'm going to go back and check. Well, we missed the hell 40, out of you guys. The The two-week period is a long time for us to be away from you guys. Last time you saw us, uh, Double C was absolutely snookered up on the other side Not of the planet. Good. I mean, just blowed out at 4 o'clock You held in the it together well, though. I thought I, you did pretty good. I um, thought you did. And uh, uh-huh. it's been, a lot has happened in our sport um, in the last – uh, several weeks we got a rock star guest that's going to be on after a little while there's so much to talk about i don't even know where to start first of all let's talk to you two guys what have y'all been up to since the last been happening in my- go ahead C. well i uh unfortunately had to come back to the good old united states of america <sighs> which mykonos santorini was amazing y'all if you if you can go, go. I am as broke as a broke girl gets because of that vacation, but it was so worth it. It was incredible. I slept. I drank a lot. I got, I have a suntan. I have like a bikini suntan and I've never really had that. It's freaking amazing. Do we amazing. need to start some kind of like GoFundMe, no. get CE back on track? No, I, no, <laughs> I get no. it. Get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And I will I say, Stevie texted me while I was gone. And he was like, I just want to remind you, you've been doing so well with your running and you're working out. Like, don't fall completely off the wagon. And I'm glad you did because I didn't. And I started a new program when I got home. So now we're working on the old guns. Whoop, whoop. But um, I came home and we went to Austin, Texas, like literally landed 12 hours later. Jet lagged as a mf -er. went to Austin, Texas with the greats and announced the pro superstar shootout. So that was a whirlwind of a week and then i made a selfish call and i didn't go to pdra this weekend because i went to go pack in my closet and i all but started crying so i needed a weekend at home and i took a weekend at home and remulched my yard and unpacked and took a breath yeah i'll be honest with you and we're gonna get to pdra later i was turned on flow and i was like that's where's courtney i was like so I figured you either went on strike or something, but that's a busy two weeks. R.I.P. to a monumental bar in the stockyards over the weekend. Dude, you did Cadillacs. Cadillacs oh, burned down. Yeah, Rest it peace. was. We Dion and I were out that night. And we were actually going to go there and saw on Facebook that Cadillacs burnt down. But the mm-hmm. update is it was it started in the upstairs. It was a gas leak and it started in the upstairs, and so the downstairs only got a little bit of damage. And oh, they made a post and they are like gung ho to get that thing back open. I don't know how long it's going to take. Awesome. It's pretty bad, but um, it's a scary night in Fort Worth on Saturday. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, there's a, I read a little bit about that, but not. <laughs> oh, I was you to get a little note. <laughs> oh, you trying to check that out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so what have you been up to, Lyle? Well, the world? so since the last time uh, we were shaking bacon, uh, continuing to be like the world. And then I decided uh, we're going to throw beer money back together, rolled to Shadyside Dragway for Corey Stamper's Carolina Cash Days. And for the fourth time, beer money put the old donkey dragon ass gapping on the field, brought home the cheese, 
uh, did not have a race that was within one of these, uh, and we got it done again. I'm now – I know for sure – Corey was questioning it or not, but I'm now for sure the winning is Carolina Cash Days, uh, Beer Money, myself, and Pete, uh, this combo. The winningest team in Carolina Cash Days history. I had it on my list to talk about Lyle Gap and Crabs, and we just got that one right on out the way. Check. Yeah, it was, it, it was pretty ugly. That, that thing – if I could show you time slips, which I don't because some of these grudge deals, they don't allow you to show a time slip within a 365 calendar year deal or whatever, but it was literally printing time slips. The last four rounds within a hundredth of each other was awesome. That's left awesome. alone, let her rip. So you didn't do any tweaking, tuning, no dynoing, no, no nothing? You just took it no, out there and just unloaded it and just ripped it? First round, we went out there and stepped straight on the end of our pecker. Check, check. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Um, and then <laughs> after that, we uh, we got her dialed in, and Pete said, "Hey, what do you think about just leaving it alone?" I said, "I've never heard anything better in my life." So we literally left it alone, and it was within a hundredth uh, the last three or four rounds. It was awesome. Oh, I'm texting that. God, uh, I really I got forgot to, together. I forgot to hold something. Matt, I did text you a picture. I know it was like. 10 minutes before the show started, but whatever. No matter well, how Matt, hard Matt tries so to get us here's, to do it Here's a true story for you, Shaking Bakers. We made a pact to, like, make sure that we quit giving Matt 10,000 things to do on Tuesday, and we would have all of our content to him for the show. And we haven't Sunday, done it yet. And we, we haven't yet. made that deadline yet. So I know I Matt has a photo a Sunday. Dark, Matt has a dart board with our three faces on it, I'm sure, and he throws a dart at it every time he wants to strangle us. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> so for me. From now until the end of the show, anything donated straight to Matt. Straight to <laughs> straight nerd to Matt. Matt. Straight to Matt. Matt, the super we love nerd you, Matt. of all nerds. We do love you. Uh, so I've had a busy two weeks. So y'all been greasing it up. Y'all been no prepping. Y'all been crushing everybody. I have been uh, whirlwind with the new facility. Uh, you guys knew about the new shop. Not a lot of people did. Um so we announced that this week, uh, along with I made my first runs in a hot rod uh, in the last nine months. Uh, so that was exciting. Uh, we'll have some video up from that if I can ever figure out how to get it up. Hey, I did see that first rip ahead. off the button. You turned her red. So you're dying. No, I didn't. Right the there. first one, I was 011. The second one, I turned her red and went 005. Right back there. So, yeah. Right. Welcome well, back. I just told Welcome the guy. back, champ. Well, my guys were talking shit to me. They're like, you're not going to be able to drive. You're not going to be able to still do it. I said, y'all watch. Let me show you how to run this son of a bitch down through there. So we did a little smoky, smoky uh, burnout and stuff. First run. I want to let them know that I can still burn the tires. Can we get our uh, parental advisory warning top corner? Yeah, bottom. we need to get that up there before we start F-bombing and stuff like to, that. I'm going to try and I, I need to better. cuss. Oh, good You need to God, cuss? Courtney. <laughs> Come on. First, we're not drinking wine on the show. Oh, Next, we're time. going on a Mediterranean diet. I mean, now every time I get on here, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for my next invite to some rehab facility. Like, Courtney's going to try to talk me into something. Come on. Well, here's the thing. I'm a, well, here's the I'm thing. a lady. My, my mother's watching. and Well, no, fuck. She should... don't care, but it's my dad. Oh, uh, excuse me. Greg? Not really. I mean, I Greg, my Greg mom. gets it. I really hope like, my mom don't watch this I'm show. a lady, and I'm a professional, and I, I need people to take me seriously. And wrong, I wrong show for you. <laughs> like, so you, just to get this straight for the people at home, you decided to be a host on the Shake and Bake show no, while, simul while simultaneously <laughs> wanting to clean up your life. Yeah, wrong. No. I mean, that's like a double All right, negative. fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Right? Are we, are no, we better? Are we yeah, good, Law? Talk her right into that. Yeah, peer, peer pressure just, gives the best you in a hurry. Holy shit. Say, Matt, you just got a hundred bucks. <laughs> Matt I does rule. I may have uh, fucked you on this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huh? No, I hey, I'm with it. He deserves it. I told him the other day, I said, Matt, you either got to figure out a way to let me figure out how to pay you more or uh, something. So Matt's not even on here now. Well, that's, oh, that's, he the, that's the only decision we have because if he quits, we're super fucked. Hey, Matt, yeah. I don't know if you can hear this, but you just got 100 bucks. We're donating all the sticker cheese. 100, 105 to be exact. Yeah, you're $104.98. <laughs> what are you? Darren just said, Courtney, this is not the view. That's oh, true. Right. Also, did y'all see that, that, that lady, Joy? She fell straight on the freaking stage of the view the other day. 
That I do not watch The View. I've never seen it. Me neither, it, so but I, I saw the personal sports. She just, it's just oh, a, there's a, our parental a, advisory a warning. Kane's fan, Chris, asked, did Lyle trim his beard? No. It is looking a little shorter today. That's because I've been outside. So, I I'll, I'll guess my uh, You've been my in the humidity. My stepbrother proposed to his girlfriend. She said yes. Uh -huh. We've been taking pictures on the beach. I sprinted back up the walkway. The humidity's got her sucked up and tight, but still looking all right. We're good. Poor man's weather station for you folks not watching. I mean, uh, not not versed in the way of humidity. If you have hair <laughs> and you're having a good hair day, your engine makes a lot of power. If you have hair and your hair looks like shit, your motor runs like shit. And that is unless, that's pretty much. Unless you're Ricky Smith and there's 900 grains of water. Yeah, well, still, he would run better if his hair looked better. Because, like, oh, your hair is all poopy. Well, well, I mean, would, you would run even better, is what I'm saying. True, yeah. The the, the correction factor is, <laughs> is uh, definitely not the same. While we're talking about... Tight bush, yes. Father, no, Father Time. Love him, hate him, respect him, don't. That was pretty cool, him getting in Palmer's car and getting to witness it firsthand. I don't know what y'all think of it, but I'm going to say my opinion first because I thought it was super sick. We've already talked about this. Super sick. We already talked about it, and I think Oh, I was badass. drunk. I'm sorry. I was drunk. Yeah, you were drunk. My we bad. all gave him kudos. We said I could not believe he did as good a job as he did right off the rip. And, yeah, I don't remember uh, I was very all. impressed. <laughs> I've never seen anyone jump in one and do that well. So until I get him one. <laughs> All right, but, so uh, advisory warning for Courtney. If she repeats herself from the last show, she was drunk. Yeah, if Courtney appears to not be uh, on the ball, it's because she wasn't on the ball. But I'm good now. That was my This is my first cup, so. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> let's segue into – so before Brian gets on, let's talk about all the controversial shit that he's not going to talk about. Let's talk about – a little bit that happened uh, this week in the uh, law side, in the legal side of uh, the world, uh, with uh, some potential lawsuits, verdicts, and uh, the the double o, the double o shit show. Uh, what a uh, court wreck. ruling! We would like to to get some Dude. insight on what happened there. Come on, man! I have I'll, it. I'll talk about. The, I'll talk about the, from the outside looking in. The people want to know. <clears throat> Here's like I, what happened. Oh, you want to talk about the outside first? Yeah, I mean, so Double okay. O Shit Show, some of us know who he is or she. Some of us don't. But the fact that my dude spent what he spent, right? Like he, I mean, I'm talking about plane tickets. He flew to Texas. He did all the things to show up and show homeboy that he was for real. And like for the judge to literally sit up there with a stack of papers and be like, not to Double O Shit Show, to the, I guess that would be Double O Shit Show. But you can show say his name. They made it clear that it's defendant. not a, it's not a. Brendan Welch line. is the plaintiff, right? For the judge to just laugh in Brendan's face. Like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Like, we, we have pulled this guy from out of state. He has plane tickets. He has hotel stays. He's got all the things involved to come here and show up. And this is what you have brought to the table. And David made a, made a good point that. <laughs> Like he can do that because I guess he's considered low income and it's free right. apparently. So yeah. he can just do that. Right. Like you can cause all this turmoil simply because you're considered low income and it's, and it's free of charge and it's cost David now a thousand dollars. But from this point forward, as the judge ruled and you'll go into that, it's no longer going to be free for him. So if anybody, if you have been dead or living on a rock under a rock for the last month, um, a guy in the drag racing community, Brennan Welch, has accused Double O Shit Show of harassment, defamation of character, um, I think assault even, like just ludicrous charges. I got a cease and desist letter, letter probably 10 or 15 people have gotten them. And he took, <laughs> Brendan took David to court. So, like for real, like to court. For real. Yeah, not like Judge Wapner. He took him to court. To yeah, actual court in Nebraska, and David could have not shown and telecommunicated through whatever, but he said, I want to make it clear that, you know, I'm fighting this and that Brendan can't mess with me. And so got on a plane, paid his own money, got on a plane, went there. <laughs> I showed up to court in a rental car that was faster than any race car Brandon is on, <laughs> which is true. 
I guess the rental car woman asked if he could drive a stick shift and he said, so you got to tell us, David, something about like, doesn't my mullet say I can or something like that. Um, <laughs> so he gets there, he gets to court and long story short, he made a statement on double a shit show. If you guys want to read his words, go on there. But the judge basically told Brendan that this was a waste of time, a waste of resources, a waste of the court's time, a waste of the people's time and a waste of David's time. And that it's very clearly a first amendment issue. And that is just so black and white. And David's allowed to do and say what he wants. There's been no harassment. There's been no assault. There's been no defamation. And so our mighty, mighty cult leader from double O shit show fought for us. That and seems won. lead vocals for the Leonard Skinner band. The <laughs> Incredible. Team. And the best part, I wouldn't say this because this is, this is bad and I feel bad, but it's just like the movie. This is something we saw on the TV show. When he got off the um, witness stand, poor Brendan took a stumble and all of his papers went everywhere. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> the world, don't you think the world would be much better if everyone had some level of common sense? A hundred percent. But common, just like they I, say, common sense ain't so common. But just, if you're ever going to do anything stupid, just look in the mirror and be like, you know what? This seems like it's fixing to be freaking stupid. I've been in litigation with this idiot for the past 10 years about some same type of stupid shit than this. And I just want to be like, you know what? Just ask yourself if it's stupid or not. Well, the, you know what? I'm going to dump nitromethane in my car, put turbo on it, screw blower, and a pro charger, and make a run. That's not smart. But what if he doesn't have anyone to ask? He doesn't. And I think that that's... that's I'm not talking about him. Problem. I'm talking about society as a whole. Well, I'm, but, I, but don't, again, I, I don't know like, him. I don't if know. If somebody him. is uneducated enough or dumb enough to do what is happening here, maybe they maybe all they have to ask is themselves. And in the mirror, maybe it says, hell yeah, brother. You should Get do her it. done. You should do it. Get her done. I'm not and saying I do. that I don't sometimes ask myself if this is stupid and talk myself into the stupidity. I'm not saying it won't happen. But Stevie, every once I've, while been, I've, I've been in your trailer when you've asked yourself, Lau, do you think? I'm like, Dude, I, I don't know if you should lean it out nine or ten numbers and give it another four or five degrees. Sounds like a good idea to me. Might knock the blower off of it. And sure as shit, about 400 feet. <laughs> If you guys oh, ever you. watch me tune a race car, if I'm in there by myself, I will talk to myself and I'll be like, man, Stevie, this just, I don't think it's going to make it. Or he does quit do being that. a pussy. Like, you know, I, I do talk to myself. So sometimes like Lyle's sitting in there and he's like, I don't know. Can I do it? I'm like, yeah, he's like, man, would you do this? And he's, he's sped <laughs> off all, like he's in his spreadsheet. See right here, right here when I did this in 2011 with that car over there and it was like, uh, one grain less water, but we were across an, on the other side of the world, and it's a little different there. But when I did this, it really ran well, and I'm like, hell yeah, brother. I think you should do it right now. Absolutely. You know? Next thing you know, you just... Yeah, old Hank whistle comes off the yeah. top of that unit. Oh, Hank whistle. Um, Moral of the story, I feel bad for the guy, but – in the game of America, uh, it, you lost, and justice was served, and double. As time goes on, I feel I feel less and less bad for him. Me too. Yeah, it's just it, it, at this point. I it's haven't like, had enough on, wine to be a dick brother. yet. However, I'm gonna, I'm the constant content for Double O Shit Show keeps me motivated to want it to continue on. So I'm, right, here, so I'm here for it. Moral of the story: Before you take somebody to court, know who you're call taking Stevie. to court. Call Stevie. Call Stevie yet. Eight yeah. six seven five three zero nine. Three zero nine. Five three zero nine. Um, let's talk about. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. So let's talk about tracks that are fair for testing. I didn't tell you any of you guys. We tested in Darlington Dragway this week. Uh, my first time in the car for nine months, and uh, I think it matched. Tell them what you were off the button. Have we? Did we talk about this? We line? did. First run in nine months off out of out the operating room. I was 011. Second one, I was 004 red. Hey, you I know mean, what? Straight off the operating Stevie, table. But here, let's let, let's rewind for just a second. You were what off the button? 011. All right, let's go back to Vegas. No, oh, I know where this is going. 2021. Yeah. Guess what I was off the button? What? Go ahead and tell him. 011. Guess what I beat Jr. Gray to the finish line by. 11. All right, move on. <laughs> Boom. All right. So here, here's the first burnout. Here's the first burnout out of the operating table. This is going to get your pecker hard if you got a pecker. I 
I had to give it a little run at the end just to let Sydney know that I'm sorry about what I just See, did. To you what both. I still haven't gotten is, is I've gotten a little, just a little blip right off the right off the line lock button. But that one you've got just as you roll out where it comes off and on, I can't get it yet. Yeah, you got it. It takes very, very precise. Mister Miyagi <laughs> say precise foot control equals good rod bearing. So were you just like lit up? Be honest with you. To start with, if you read the Competition Plus article Bobby Bennett wrote. I was honest. I wasn't scared of doing the burnout and running the car. I was scared by neck hurting. I was thinking, all right, idiot. It's been nine months. Do not oh, go that's out That's when here. you think about it? <laughs> like you said. We got it at 7,000. You're like, at, what if it hurts my neck? Look at, look yourself yeah. in the mirror and say, hey, oh, stupid. Is this is a this good stupid. idea? So that's what I was worried about. But after the first burnout, I didn't give a shit. I was like, oh, and, and you're going to hear a lot of Karate Kid references because Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3 just came on Netflix, and I watched Karate Kid 1 and 2 in the last two days. So I got a lot of Mr. Mi- internal Mr. Miyagi stuff that you'll be seeing looking out. But it was awesome. It was fun. Huge thanks to Sidney Frico for letting me drive his car the first time. I probably wouldn't. Uh, he just hands the keys. He's like, hey, go out there and have some fun, kid. And I'm like, all right. Ah, awesome. ah, and just run her down through there. So a lot Sydney's of fun. a good dude, though. If I hadn't drove Pro Mod in nine months, I wouldn't let somebody drive a Pro Mod. Probably. Speaking, so now, I'm reading through these comments. Speaking of um, it, Darlington, oh, that's what I wanted to get to. Kudos to the tracks that offer fair testing. Uh, Darlington Dragway, great facility. Jeff Miles doing a great job. Surface is good. It is agreed. high and yep. tight, and it is reasonable. You do not going to test there is not like going to Indy, where it's thirty two thousand five hundred dollars a day. And you, you don't have to put your truck title in hock. You don't have to stop by the bank with a semi-automatic weapon and try to take some money out illegally. You can just go there, run on a good facility that's safe, and give them a little bit of money, and everybody's happy. So that's what and I want I, to get to with that. And I've tested there, and it, it there is zero fear taking one to the finish line. Like the quarter mile finish line. Like, take it through there. It's He does a great job. And, Jeff and, and there's a bunch of other tracks that are very fair too. You, not Jeff. singling out uh, Jeff. No, for sure. There's not. some other or other really good tracks that are reasonable. And then there's some tracks that charge nine thousand dollars a day or thirty two thousand five hundred dollars a day. And then that, I just got to You got to quit going to those racetracks and testing. If you give those people that type of money, they will think that that's what a a racetrack gets for testing for a day. So wow, do not today. give anybody thirty two five hundred. Today, your your daddy Justin Elks made some hits in that thing. He did, and he didn't tell me. Like I, <laughs> I didn't get so to call him before now. the show, but so, I was going to so, call him and cuss him good. So, so how Elk you not drove the car? Him? Yes, and did good. Ooh, that's really? what he jumped, in, he jumped in your hot rod and and raced it. Well, no, 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 not mine. Mason Wright's. Oh, okay, I got you. He was Man, I would have wanted to go to see that. I wonder if we got. But however, if Tyler Crossno host a uh, a test like a big hey guys, we're having a NHRA Pro Mod test session leading up to mm, let's just call it Indy, there would be like a fault line that would start and cut yeah. right through the middle of the racetrack Ooh. as somebody went down the racetrack. Like, it would be the most god awful thing you've ever seen. So Tyler, I love you to death, but you need to go to the truck stop and do what we all know you need to do to fix Tyler. That. I also need to do that. So if you think we can get a two for one, I'll go in with you. I have to get, uh, the I'll organize terrain it. off the thing. Uh, and then comment DB, uh, whatever they tell you to do as far as your physical therapy, do it. It's a pain in the ass. You'll hate it. But when it's all done, you'll be glad you did. While you do need a tag on fajita special at Mac, Mac Fab. No, nobody <laughs> needs that. We're putting a um, – let's see if we got any footage up of, 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 of what we got next. To talk you're going to die on that hill, aren't you, Lyle? <laughs> you're going to get you're going to get crucified on that hill. I'll be the last man standing to say fajitas are just fucking suck. Hey, we'll see Ooh, what we, one of the smartest men I know, Brian Lones, has to say about fajitas here shortly. Y'all do not badger him on fajitas till the end. Till the end. I, think, I, don't I, think, get him I think he's in agreement. I don't want I well, we're going to see, but I don't want to. I don't want to cloud. Not worth it. I don't want to cloud. If they just way. brought it on a plate already prepared, we know. Um, God, <laughs> I, I sorry, sorry, folks. This was going well, God. and then we mentioned <laughs> we, got we mentioned it. fajitas. Oh man, and I'm actually um, starving. I would love a fajita right now. I bet you um, would. Yeah, You're I like mean, I wanted to bring that. One. I wanted to bring that thing out. Just, you kid. Anywho, back on track. The things we wanted to cover before Loans gets on here. What else did we want to cover? 
Uh, I want to talk about um, PDRA, and then I want to talk about racetracks closing. PDRA. So, so they just it. just so we can get it out of the way because it broke my heart. Poor old Ken Cartuccio. Man, I feel right. bad. I watched that and God. I knew it was bad. I'm glad to see Dang him it. hop up out of that thing. That was a bad lick. I mean, he's he leading the points. And he's got. And he has the problem. resources to come back and and probably finish the year. But like, dude, they had such a good thing going. Ken's such a good driver. I mean, I I would have picked him at this point in the season to definitely win the championship as good as he was driving. And just shit. Yeah, they not um, good. They, I mean, they've been going to work. Like it's impressive where they're already at in the in the rebuild stages and stuff. And obviously, I've got my little in with Kelsey and stuff. But I mean, they are fully committed. I that's one of those wrecks where when you see it, <laughs> thanks, Melanie. When you see I was it, I was well, laughing. I, I, I didn't I think of the wreck. I was laughing at Jeffrey Burger's comment. We'll get to it in a second. Fair. Um, it's just one of those. I was doing my hair. We were, I was getting ready to go see the Barbie movie. And it's like, I, you said, I said out loud, I was like, Oh my God, get out of the car. Like some wrecks, you know, that, okay, they're pretty protected. I mean, that was a, that was a scary one. And it was really good to, to see him walk away from that. And they were there pretty quick on him. But, um, other than that, and I think he was well on his way before that red light, um, Franklin, he won again, pro nitrous Harris won pro boost. Jason Harris party time, baby. He sure did party time. Yeah, he's driving the awesome. wheels off that thing. Everybody complain about he's parody so good, and all that. Want none so of that good. matters when your trip zip. It don't he's matter. So you don't need. You, you can. So just can we? Get it. And I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not talking bad about Ken and Jamie Miller and the whole crew. But can we talk? Because I've seen a couple. Posts Be careful! About last it. time you uh, talked bad about them, they won like 48 races in yeah, a row. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about fire bottle placement in race cars? Uh, yes, I and believe why, that there is and, to be had, and why that. You know, I get it, man. Like, that's a good place to put them because weight bias is so important. These cars and the minimum weights are getting light. Ken's not a heavy dude, but in general, drivers are heavier these days than they were in years past. And and I know mounting fire bottles on the nose makes some of that easier, but it's such a bad idea. You know, like in most cases, in most cases, the nose of the car is the first thing to hit the wall. Yeah. In you you think about all the re all the wrecks you've seen, like even mine, right? Like, yes, okay, I caught on fire first, but the first thing to nose into the wall was the nose of my car. And you know, you saw in Ken's wreck, um, the fire bottles flipping out through the grass and and letting go of all their internals there, but. Like I don't, I don't know what you do about it. Do you, do you start mandating where the fire bottles are placed, or how do you fix that? Right, you know, because that's not the place for them to be. Closest to the driver, in my opinion, right behind the driver's seat or somewhere beside them, I think is where they should be. Um, somewhere, you know, I, I've seen a bunch of cars, uh, fire pull handles, not somewhere that they should be. There's for the longest time, Stevie. I guarantee you, ninety percent of the cars you've driven, the fire bottle has been up to your right in the main hoop or in the funny car hoop somewhere where you cannot see it should you get in a situation where you need to pull it. I'm a firm believer that it needs to be somewhere where you can visually look at it and pull it when you need it. Because when, when the time comes, if you're in the fight or flight mode and you need to pull the fire bottles, I don't think up here out of sight, out of mind is a place for them to be. That's where mine was in the Corvette. Now, granted, by the time it was time to pull the fire bottles, the handle was melted off. There was nothing I could do anyway. But I think with Ken's wreck and things that have happened here recently, there needs to be kind of a revamp on where the fire bottles can and should be placed. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think it needs to be in the cockpit within the main hoop. Ever since I crashed in 2018, I have never had a fire bottle on the nose and will not put one up there. I, I like mine tucked in between the frame rails on the rear tree or in the in the passenger compartment. Passenger compartment, you need weight on the right side of the car. If you smash the back hard enough to knock the fire bottles yeah. off, you probably are not going to be on fire because it, there's no nothing flammable back there. So I, I like both of those spots. I don't think a fire bottle should ever be on those. Yeah, I don't know enough to even comment on that because I've never been in one of those things going that way. But it common sense wise doesn't seem like what would make impact first should be where it's at. There's a there's a lot of them out there though. 
And for whatever well, reason, the nitrous cars I seen seem to see them more prominent to have them mounted on the nose. And the the whole fire system in a car, if you've I'm never wait, yeah. looked at it or tested your fire system, you should. There's a lot of times um, because you know you 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 never really test the fire system until you need it. So when I get a new car, I take the fire bottle out, I hook shop air up to the deal and pump shop air through it and make sure all the fittings are tight. Most of the time you'll have a, a, a fitting that's loose. You'll have something that, and you want that stuff going where it's supposed to go. Uh, so as far as the handle, I've seen it both ways. When I ran Jim Whiteley's car, he wanted it on the steering column right in front of his face, but his arms were long enough to reach it. I can't get there. So mine, you know, most of the time is here. I've had, I've ran cars for people that wanted them on the, the passenger frame rail over there. Um, that's a double-edged sword with maintenance in a car. You don't want to get it where the guys are knocking that thing out. Um, but I, I believe we do need a standardized location across the board, uh, at least for new car construction. You know, say, hey, guys, from this year on, the thing's got to be here. And eventually that, they'll all be there. I just think it needs to be somewhere visible. As in when you're in the when you're driving and shit goes wrong, it just needs to be, hey, there it is, instead of somewhere where you just have to reach for it. Because if you're belted in right, your head neck restraint is hooked up. That one up there is hard to see. Most I um and I, I'm I I was laughing when we were talking about Ken because I was reading Jeffrey's comment, but I hate to see that, and I hope he gets back on his feet, gets his uh gets his hot rod, gets a he hot will. rod fixed and running, um pretty soon. That's a he tough deal to anybody crash. He's the people's king. I know that um, I'm sure that there was people who offered them a whip, you know, to, to get this done. But I think they'll get it put together. So Jeffrey was – Lyle, uh, Jeffrey needs your burn doctor's number. He was welding on something of mine today with his watch on and has melted all the skin off under his, <laughs> under his watch. And I know it hurts, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to save that for when I need to poke at him. I got a, so I've actually been in contact with the burn center this week too, Jeffrey. Um, the awning that covers a slide on my motorhome got caught between the slide and the motorhome. And if you know me well, uh, you've got about two or three seconds to get that figured out, or it's time to bring out the cutting wheels, the hacksaws, and get rid of that. So I gave it the two or three seconds, got the cut wheel off. When I cut the uh, the main support there that holds the awning on, it started freewheeling at a rapid rate. <laughs> I mean, it's going, and then on about the third or fourth, it stuck it to my hand <laughs> and it burned it good. I'm like, sorry for laughing. The, yeah. mental, the mental image of that makes me wish <laughs> so, I had a video clip of it. <laughs> so I immediately text the nurse that took care of me day in and day out in there and said, hey, look, this is what I did. She sends it to the doctor there, and the doctor says, I think that'll heal. However, by Wednesday of next week, if it doesn't look like this, then you should come into the clinic. <laughs> like, You're like, I never wanted to go back there again. Good job. Right on, right on a fresh skin graft, right? Perfect place to do it. Um, um, if you guys, if you guys, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I finally got some stuff uploaded. Uh, we had a big week announcing our new facility uh, coming out this, uh, this week. Matt's finally got us some footage uploaded of that. Um, yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're let's just say we should have plenty of room going forward. Um, I'm excited about <laughs> that's a really funny looking photo, perfect, there, Matt. Perfect, yeah. yeah, that's a good looking guy right there. Um, he's slim and trim these days. I'm working on it. I want to be a race car driver again. I wouldn't call it slim. But uh, we're working on it. So uh, all of you folks that have applied for employment, uh, steviefast.com slash careers, I have your resumes. I've been sifting through them. I actually have a stack of them right here. We've been wide open getting ready for Brainerd. Uh, the, the Super Bowl of our season is coming up, uh, and I am going to get to some of you guys. Um, the only two things I wanted to touch on with PDRA that we didn't get to before, Ken, was um, – Bill Lutz, 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 I'd always say it wrong. He had a pretty big, big explosion, too, and came back. There was the some fact, The fact that they form. made the next round. It, the With fact they made any guest. round. Unbelievable. Any round. I wish we had to put into that. God. Um, I could have had that. We have it. Um, well, how about this? I'll post it on Flow Drag Racing tomorrow. 
Yeah, that'll um, be good. That, it, that was a big boomer. And I can tell you, because I have blown up like that, it takes a lot to fix it. And he had a lot of folks help him. I don't even know what all happened. I'm just telling you, there was dozens They were up people all night, like didn't sleep, that fixed barely that race made car. it. Yeah, so and that's then, who's, um, and he went to the final. He made it to the he final. He did go to the finals. Right. And then uh, Johnny Pochino ended his dry spell of the year and won his first race of the year. So that's all I got on PDRA. Well, good. I think it was a great event. I think PDRA is doing a great job. I think the competition packed. there is tight. Drivers are driving well. Cars are fast. They've got Larry Dixon's top fuel car. They had Gary Pritchett. Gary Pritchett ran a junior dragster in the other lane in his top fuel car. Did y'all see I that? I saw that. I did see that. I was like, that's Whose not a good mommy idea. allowed that? But can you <laughs> my imagine? Mom, my mom would have been like, get out the there, Stevie, lane. try to win. I'd have swerved at him. That's crazy. But um, they filled the stands. Thousands of people there every day. That was PDRA's goal this year. Competition's as good as it is. And I think that they are having a banner year, if I may, West Bucket. There you go. All right, without further ado, I have been waiting to get this guest on our show since we started this show. The very first episode, I asked Lyle, I said, I want to get loans on here. And Lyle told me, he's like, he's going to be awesome. He said, but let's wait till time is right. So every week, I'm like, I want to get loans on here. Oh, so you had me on first? Uh, I had you on here as a filler, and then people liked you for some reason, and then we got you back. I'm not sure what happened. And then next thing you know, you've taken over the thing. Now your yeah, meme now, is everywhere. Now here you now are, 17 fucking now you're episodes 17 later. episodes, you're like a, you know, just like. Hair ain't man, washed. Got them in pigtails. Ain't washed. You see what anyway. she does. So, like, she dresses up hot in, like, a mini skirt one episode to bait you all in. And then next time, she's like, I just left the truck stop with Lyle. So, you no, know, I think no. you look nice in pigtails. And I race, think uh, folks put a lot of comments on that. So you did good. It's dirty. But with no further ado, let's bring on the godfather of drag racing, the voice of the NHRA. The philosopher. The philosopher of speed, Brian Loans. There he is. What's happening? We need kid? a clapping meme. How are you? Yeah, we need that. Uh, what's going on, Loans? I've been called the philosopher. I've been called the godfather. And I've been called Jesus this week. And I, yeah. for at least two out of three of those, it ended pretty bad. So I'm not sure which way. I'm not sure which way. <laughs> not it's sure. like well, tonight will set your fate, buddy. It depends. I want to Don't fuck this up. It depends on your perspective of whether that's good or bad. That's so. true. That's, that's all, that's all I can scream it up, I guess. Sure. Can I just make a PSA before y'all start talking smart people stuff? We are now, Stevie and Lyle, the dumbest people in the room. Oh, uh, no. I agree. I no. Oh, I, I am pretty dumb. I don't believe that's factual. Um, we do. The three Long of us you? combined do not combine, do not possess the knowledge that Brian Long no. does. So. All Welcome. I know how to do is blow shit up. That's all right, that's Matt. All kick him off. He's out. <laughs> um, so for for yeah, move him to the top right, Matt. That was good. Um, for oh, most of you, at, for most of you hardcore racing fans, you know who Brian Loans is. If you don't, uh, Brian Loans announced for the NHRA. Uh, I'm not even going to tell him all your all credentials. Uh, FS1. Sure. I, I have a special I, I call it a special relationship with brian because we have been in racing for roughly the same amount of time when i first started coming out and swinging at all the backwood tracks uh in the in the southeast and started racing B loans was just kind of getting his his feet in the door and uh, i want to talk about that uh, tell the folks where you came from so i came from uh new england I, I still live in i still live in the uh, New England region. I live just outside of Boston, so I grew up. And so I came out of New England Dragways, my home race track. And then uh, from there, you know, I kind of started, I, I went with the IHRA. New England was an IHRA uh, racetrack. So my first kind of traveling experience outside of some super Chevy shows was going to work uh, for Bill Bader and the IHRA. So I worked for Bill and Aaron Polburn and those guys for years. And then off of that, you know, you go to some of these tracks and the guy would hear you and be like, hey, I got this thing coming in a couple of weeks. So for a long time, I, you know, for probably the first 10 years of doing this stuff, I did regular jobs and then I would do all this stuff like on my vacation time and all the other stuff. So um, for me, it was like grew up loving the sport. My dad was a racer back in the day when I was a little kid. He didn't race, but he restored old Pontiac GTO. We used to go to all these car shows and stuff. So I grew up loving cars. But for me, New England Dragway and the New England region was my home kind of home base. I mean, in college, I worked at Lebanon Valley Dragway. Then I started working at Lebanon Valley and New England at the same time. And it was just the whole thing 
the whole thing kind of spiraled from there. I'd sleep in my truck in the parking lot at Epping until the track manager gave me keys. So I was, I had a key to the gate. So I'd be able to go inside and sleep in the tower. And that's the whole thing where I used to basically I'd sleep in the tower at Epping for most weekends of the summer. Cause I'd work Friday night, Saturday night, and then I'd drive home on Sunday. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I came from. The old, uh, and, the old New England dragway. And, and back in the day, you did not just announce like you, you did other stuff in the I, track, right? I see you time sleep in the water time, box, everything. Dash, timing system, starting line. I mean, all the, you know, basically everything that needed anything that they wanted me to do, I would do. I just, I love being there. And I raced, you know, I bracket raced with my dad for five years. And I think, uh, you know, I, I probably won three rounds in about five years. And I figured out that probably wasn't my path. Uh, my path was not there. Word. My only, uh, my only like life <laughs> highlight in, in bracket racing was I had a perfect light in the semifinals of a super Chevy show where Don Garlitz was there. And so I, I, I'm like, oh, my God. So I get the time slip and I go running down to Don Garlitz. I'm like 18 years old and he's got this line of people and he's signing up, uh, you know, posters and stuff. So I go out, up. I said, uh, Mr. Garlitz, like, will you sign my time slip? He's like, are you going to buy a poster? I'm like, whatever, whatever you need me to buy. So Don Garlitz signed my time slip, but I had to buy a poster. <laughs> <by a poster. laughs> but yeah, I had, I had one perfect light in my life and, uh, and Garlitz signed the slip. That was pretty much where I peaked at 18. <laughs> Yeah, but like, but it's kind of like all of us started. I know, especially me and Lyle, we started because we wanted to race cars. Yeah, and then you know we all find a a, a niche or niche or however you to say that in our sport. And watching you develop from where you started to where you're at now, I'm a huge fan. Like, and, and it, it takes a lot of work, and like people don't see that. We see it uh, because we we see you on Friday night after you've been in the tower for 16 hours and you hate yourself, hate your life, and we know how much hard, how much work it is. Uh, but I love seeing you do good. I mean, I like seeing yeah. where you're at. To me, if, the fascination. Were... No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. I was, was going to say the fascination for me is what is is always it's always been race car drivers because I was bad at it, right? So I was not good at it. I didn't. I, I it wasn't that I was physically incapable of doing it, or I was I was not coordinated enough to do it but my approach i just love being at the racetrack i loved being at the racetrack with my dad we had this car ran 11s i thought i was the coolest guy in the world i'm 18 years old we got this thing and what i failed to realize uh what you guys knew from the jump was that everybody else showed up to to kill me everybody else showed up to assassinate me the moment and it was like it was hilarious because like I remember the first couple of weeks we go up there and it's like man all these guys want to they want to jump in line right behind me driving to the driving to the station lanes well yeah because they knew they knew sure. I was I was the, I was the easy pickets you were the duck right I was I was I was literally the duck and so I think a lot of I think a lot of what I am fascinated by in my own job now is the fact that I was never that guy in that role I didn't understand that like I didn't know that those guys were showing up to win the freaking race. I was showing up to have a great time and have this freaking car. I could do burnouts in and go run 11s. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Well, it turns out those guys were showing up to kill me. And so <laughs> but, I've never, I've never forgotten that. And, that. and that's what fascinates me about what you guys do. See, that's how I got my started. My, my, my start too. I went to Jackson, Carolina dragway, the house of hook, same thing. I showed up in a pickup truck that ran 18s. And I went out there, and the guy I, – I still remember my first grudge race ever was against Willie Dahl. He come up to me, and he was really nice wow. and said that he wanted to have a friendly grudge race for $50. And I was like, okay, I'm going to run. So we go up there, and he just smashes me by, like, 10 car lengths. And I'm like, this sucks. I just lost $50. I thought we were here to be friends and race each other. Well, then he comes down and starts talking shit to me. I went the other way. I was like, all right, son of a bitch. I was like, I'll see you next week. And I left there and went and bought nitrous kits and bought cylinder heads from parts stores and got a dull pumper carburetor. And I come back and I kicked the shit out of them for $50 the next week. So mine started the same way. I just was like, hell no. So that uh, if you guys didn't know that, Willie Dog, it was my first grudge race ever. And he took $50 from me. He still that's, doesn't feel guilty about it. That's pretty amazing, actually. And Willie. Yeah, that's a fun fact. Willie's a great guy and, and getting to yes, know him, yes. work with him at, at some Donald uh, Donald's races back in the day. Like, I mean, this dude's a veteran. This guy's been there and done that. He's got stories for days. One of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life was it's, you know, day seven of a Donald race. And we've all been there for 27 hours a day and there's no food left. And there's like this half a bag of abandoned beef jerky in the corner that no one knows where it came from. And it's probably been there for a year and a half, but it's like, it's like at this, I'm eating the beef jerky. Fuck I, I, pick, I pick the bag of He's beef jerky. Wrong. 
I pick up the bag of beef jerk and I turn around to I turn around to Willie Dog and I go, "Hey man, um, like, do you want some of this?" He goes, "Brian." He goes, "Black people don't eat that shit." <laughs> <laughs> and he's the greatest that funny all the time. It was the all greatest the line of all time. It and was he lift off. All time. I'll and, tell you. Yeah. While we're on a Willie Dog story, I'll tell you one that nobody knows. So special delivery. <laughs> special delivery. Oh, you got a special mm. delivery. So in like, I don't know, 1997, My dog. I had this huge rivalry with Tony Bynes and Willie Dog. I got in this triangle grudge race between the two. One of them set it up. I'm racing the other one. Somehow I got schnookered and lost like $300. I thought they hated each other. I leave the racetrack. I go to the huddle house, walk in, and Willie Dog and Tony Bynes are sitting at the same table eating dinner on my money. Your dime. And that's when I realized that if you're going to be a hustler – you got to be better at it than them. And uh, Willie Tog and Tony Bynes taught me a lot about hustling people in grudge racing. Oh, listen, it's one of the greatest, one days. of the greatest videos of all time. You and Eddie Carincia, that match race. You yeah. and Eddie Carincia, and and Tony Bynes walks behind the trailer. What do we got in here? Oh, it's a top fuel dragster. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it is one of the greatest drag racing videos ever made. I bet I, I lost that, that by one thou. One thou as well, and I never. If I see Tony Bonds today, he asked me about it. Hey Stevie, he said, "Hey, the dog calls me Stevie." Hey Stevie, remember when I brought the top fuel director? I mean, it, it is funny, and now it's so funny I laugh about it. But I still, yeah. I still want that money back. Well, see, Eddie was fired. Eddie, dude. Eddie was a lunatic. Like so, yeah, twenty years crazy. ago. Twenty years ago, Eddie was showing up to IHRA national events with the top dragster that were run five seventies and five eighties. Like this was twenty years ago. In two in two thousand and three, this guy was showing up in top dragster back then. If you ran if you ran seven oh, you were somebody. And this guy's right. showing up with a car that runs freaking five seventies, five eighties. It was it was insane. It was one of the and best they, in our show. And like so, me and Robbie, we called him Handlebar. I didn't know any of that yeah. shit. I just yeah, told yeah. Robbie, "There's a dude with a yeah. like this win eight seventy one, and he's got a handlebar mustache, and there ain't no way he's kicking the shit out of me. Yeah. We're running off the trailer, and I'll never forget in my in my nares at the three thirty. I looked over and I couldn't hear him, but I just seen that little dragster wheel like in my door. And I'm like, he's over there. What am I going to do? And then he crushed me. And it's, it's, a, it's a low spot. It's a pretty sore spot in my life. So. Yeah, that we thing was, that, that thing was for its day, that thing was ridiculously fast on garbage parts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie, what so, kind of money was up for grabs in that race? So we actually, I think it was seven or eight thousand dollars back then okay. per side. It ended up being ten or fifteen grand. Uh, it was a decent pot, you know, for us back then. It was a. It, all of my <laughs> friends went home with less money than what they had. Pretty much, pretty much, we we got killed. And that's that's the. I've, uh, Tony Bynes only beat me twice in life, if I remember correctly. And he didn't beat me, but I call that a prime time win. All right. And then there was another time I think my trimmer fell out or something. Uh, but yeah, it, that was a pretty decent pot for back then. And I'll never forget for five years after that, Eddie would come by ADRL or PDRA or wherever we're at, and he'd just walk by my pits and go, hur, 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 <laughs> and just laugh at me just like that. And I mean, you allowed to love the guy. I mean, yeah, I love that, it. That was old man. That was old man strength right there. That was <laughs> the old man strength. <laughs> that little Longs, are man. you drinking Miller High? I was right just now? about to ask. Of course God. he is. He's, not, he's a gosh damn. States of America. All right. So before we get into modern day loans, let's talk about when you mentioned uh, college. What did you major in in college? What did you go to school for? So uh, journalism and English. Shocking. Mm, so you, you used the yeah. degree. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know if you went in for basket weaving or anything else. I graduated, I graduated with a, a reasonably worthless journalism degree, but I got a CDL because I worked uh, as, <laughs> as a student mechanic at the campus fleet garage. So I used to work on trucks and Right. Anything that rolled in there was buses or trucks or whatever. So my first job out of college, I drove a I drove a water truck. I was a delivery guy. What and a then truck! I drove water. a water truck. I drove a water <laughs> truck in Boston, and uh, Boston. and that's and I that was the, I worked at that company for years, and I was that ended up running the running the fleet before I left. But yeah, that was that was my my CDL was worth, and I still have my CDL, but my CDL was worth at the time. Don't tell more. Richard Freeman that you'll be driving if if it all goes down in the tower. <laughs> KTR is hiring CDL drivers. So if it all it's, just falls it, apart. It, it, honestly, it's why I keep that thing because <laughs> in, it knock on wood, I, I wake up and I'm fortunate. I think every day to do what I do. But if, if the whole bottom falls out of everything, I know you I can go drive. Have a CDL. 
Yeah, I've got it for anybody you want to. <laughs> I've got I'll a just start wandering between the two. Hey, Richard, you can have a video. You said he'd pay me 85. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, I'll pay 115. <laughs> I've got an early days question for you, love. Okay. So these, these two over here are lucky enough to have not been ducks and made their career behind the wheel. But you and I come from a special brand of people who you love drag racing, but I kind of struggled to find where I was going to land in. And I mean, even up until a couple of years ago. So you went from starting line, time slips, sleeping on the floor, all the things. Yep. At what point did you kind of see a clear path of, of what you wanted to do and where your gift was? Cause you are, you have a gift. Thank you. Uh, you know, for me, I always, uh, you know, my, my plan when I graduated college, is I just wanted to write for car magazines. That's really all I wanted to do. And um, the announcing thing was like, it kind of totally came out of the sky. And, and I, I talked about New England Dragway, but the very first thing I ever did was I was in the motorsports club at UMass and, and all those guys were, don't judge me, all those guys were road racers. So we actually had a road racing car that we would go off to these things and, and we haul this thing around all over the place. But um, the New England region of the SCCA wanted an announcer and my buddies were like, dude, you got to do it. Like, just go up there and have fun. And so that was the very first thing my announcing experience ever was these road races that I would do. And that got me the confidence to, to call the drag strip, which is what I really wanted to do. Lebanon Valley and Epping, but you know, my, uh, it, to me, I think it started to really connect for me and, and doing test and tune nights at Epping. And back in the day, now you guys have been there, you guys have seen New England dragway, but back in the day, if you can imagine it right next to the tower, there was a grandstand that was like as tall as the window. And mm -hmm. so there were people like at my eye level. And so like on a Wednesday night, you know, I would just, I would, it was like, I would just be making fun of everybody's car. Like some people would roll up <laughs> like, like, where did they steal this from? Like, it was horrible. Like, and I had to get uh, multiple times, like dude, the cop, like the, the on duty security cop would escort me to my car a couple times. Cause there were dudes that would wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. Cause I would just be like, dude, this thing's a pile. Like, what are you doing with this thing? And so like, you look over and their buddies would be staring at you. It's like, Oh shit, they can hear me. Like these people can actually see and hear me. But for me, it started to connect when I would make, like when I would crack a joke or something and look over and the people were like reacting to it. To me, that was the thing that like, that was the thing that really made like hit something in my brain where it's like, damn, okay. I can kind of make these people react to something. You and get the same feel when J.R. Gray ro rolls through the water box. I do. It's a tingle <laughs> in a place. It's a <laughs> I just wanted to make sure continue on. Just wanted to uh, continue. On. Yep, it's sorry. a very specific area. So you weren't, like, I mean, you didn't sound like you sounded at three years old and go, I know I'm going to be the voice of drag racing. No, no, I didn't. It, it was to me, it was like the, the, the greatest night of my life was the first time that I got to announce a Saturday night match race at Epping with this guy, Mike Williams, who taught me so much. And Mike, Mike's still alive. He lives in Florida. He's like one of the best guys I ever met and one of the best announcers I ever worked with. And he and I would, would do the Saturday night shows at Epping. And that was like, to me, if nothing ever that was it to me. Like I got to be there on a Saturday night where the place was packed and that nothing will ever be bigger than this. And then, you know, some stuff got bigger than that, but, but those nights were the best. Those, those are the best, absolute best nights. Yeah. And I think that, you know, talking about, you know, your craft, you have the ability to, to, to tear folks up or to, to prop them up, tear them down. But the, the gift is the ability to get a reaction out of people, whether it's good or bad, the, to get the fans engaged. Because you know now, especially most of the competitors that do what we do, but you bridge the gap between the fans and the competitors. And that's, mm -hmm. that's something that's special. There's a lot of power in that. I, I remember our, our announcer at Carolina Dragway, Mr. Dent, who's still he's the same announcer since I was 15 racing there. You know, you just never forget – uh, the ability that you have to explain our sport to people who may only get to see it one time. It might be their first time. Yeah. And uh, the way, the way you approach your craft is inspiring. So the la last weekend I was in Boise, Idaho, I did the, this night fire nationals race been going on for 52 years and, and, and firebird in Boise is one of the best drag strips in America by a ton. It's, it's way up, you know, it's way up there in Boise. It's run by the new family. Their father founded it. The brothers run the racetrack. It is, it is Norwalk West. I mean, everything is, everything is absolutely pristine and perfect. Surface is great, but it's an old school, small track, maybe seats, I don't know, 7,000, 7,500 people. This place was a complete blowout Friday and Saturday night. And I get a lot of joy in doing a race like that because there is no jumbotron, there is no live stream, there is no replay, there is no bullshit. It, it all the noise is gone. It is it is like I get to do the thing that I loved doing growing up. And 
we had a guy go out on Friday night and blow up a fuel altered, went through the lights at probably, I think he went through at about 215, 220, and this thing explodes. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's, it is a short racetrack. It's the same like this Pomona, except there's a soybean field that you have to run off into. But the thing I'll never forget is he goes through the lights and I yell, he's on fire. And the whole place stood up and it, and that like, it hit me in a, in a different way because in today's, like when we do national events and stuff, you say, Oh, the guy's on fire. And everybody looks at the jumbotron, yeah. which is fine. But when you yell, he's on fire and the whole freaking place, every, every damn person in the whole place jumped up to their feet to look, to see the top end of the racetrack. It was like, it Ooh. gave me the chills. Cause that, that was what, you know, that was the thing. And, and to your point, it's, it's not, it, it is powerful. It, it's, it's, I don't think I'd like think about the power aspect of it, but it's like you say something and, and it hit everybody's ear at the same time. And they did the same thing. Went, Oh shit. And stood up. It was, it was pretty nuts. And the guy was I fine. Chills. I just got chills. Yeah. <laughs> it is it is powerful it, it is and and watching guys like you and i'm very very fresh and you and i've talked off yeah. podcast on this very fresh in it and you you do such a good job and we're not here to fluff you we'll be done fluffing you in a minute here that's fine um, you can attack any well, just keep going. Yeah. but you do such a good job at connecting that i feel like there's there's a way to get lost in the weeds of technicality. Yep. There's a way yes. to talk to people like they should know something that they yep. don't. And, and it's just like, I'm reading the comments here and I could listen to him, read the dictionary, yada, yada, yada. Yep. And it's, it's, it can, it shows with your passion of what you do. And that's why I asked what it is because you get people who are good at their craft and then find drag racing, but then drag racing is really unique in a sense of where most of the people who work within it, no matter what we do, we're not yep. trained to do what we're doing. No. We're no. there because we love drag racing and we figured yep. out how to do something. There's a guy, John Lundberg's this guy's name. And, and so in the 1960s, you had you know, Dave McClellan was obviously the NHRA guy, Bernie Partridge and stuff. But uh, John Lundberg was known as the voice of drag racing. And John is mercifully still alive. He's a great guy. And, and uh, thankfully, I, I maintain I talk to him pretty frequently. But there's a video. Don't go to it now. Watch the show. But after the show, Good job. Go, to you, go to YouTube and, and look up John Lundberg, um, Jack McClure. And so what you'll hear is that it's, an, it's a fixed photo, but it's an audio recording of John Lundberg calling a run uh, at Lions Drag Strip at about 19, I would say 70, probably 71. And there's this guy named Captain Jack McClure who had a, a go-kart that had a hydrogen peroxide rocket engine, yeah. right? And this was an actual go-kart. This thing would run low sixes at over 200 miles an hour with a rocket engine. Oh, and so God. this was... And so when you talk about being an announcer and, and what the effect in a, a real good announcer can have on a crowd, Lundberg's calling this race and he sets up the run. And, and the beauty of it is that the rocket cart makes no noise until it actually runs. Yeah. And so they basically would push this thing into, into the stage position and do a countdown. And this guy would hit the button and off she'd go. But you got to remember, there's no scoreboards at this drag strip. There's no anything. And so the announcer has full control of the crowd, which is <laughs> awesome. Right. And when you hear him call this run, he goes re- ripping down the racetrack. And Lundberg, you hear the thing shut off, and the crowd is dead silent. And he says, Captain Jack McClure of Port Ritchie, Florida, has just traversed the quarter mile. And you know the whole crowd is ready to pull the friggin' grandstands down in six. And as soon as he gets the first word out, the place goes apeshit. Um, and it is you, you have to listen to it because that is like a master at work. That is to me like a, just find that video when you get time. But it's that is like that is the best. That is the best. That that is the that is for sure the stuff. Yeah. So, and when we talk about you know you and oh, I kind wow, of made, you almost got it. You you yeah. got a question, Law? Huh? No, I just had a statement, but go ahead. Go ahead, Law, because this is going to take a little bit. Fire away. So I've spent a little bit of time in the booth with Brian over the past year, right? Like mm-hmm. I've announced some pro mod stuff. And I always assumed, and we've announced on Fox together, on NHRA TV together, and I've always assumed that Brian and Tony show up and they let us as racers or them, when I was not racing, as as racers, write the story and they just get to narrate it, right? You know, and that's just what I've always assumed. But then I go up into the booth and Brian Lawns brings out this book and he flops it open, right? And it's the words are, I, I mean, like, I've got very good vision, right? Thankfully, after considering all. And I look down at this book, and he's he's looking through there as somebody runs, and he sticks the microphone to his mouth, and he's still cocking out the side of his eye, and he's reading some stat from fucking 2013 or something. I'm like, how the fuck? But this shit's everywhere, right? Like, there's papers, and there's 
this and oh it's just an ashley and they just grab a section of the book and they flip it over and here it is it's just ashley's stat since he was shot out of the end of <laughs> yeah father time we got it but like i mean it's unbelievable man like i've i've never in my I, I just always assumed because you know and brian back when you announced when steve and i were radio racing at ducks races and stuff and yeah. you walk up the tower and al tucci's there He's just firing off and this, that, and the other. And there's not a whole lot of notes up there. You're just yeah. going off of what's happened in years past. But, like, I go into the booth, in the Fox booth at an NHRA national event, and it's not that way, not at all. Yeah, right? it, like, it, you're, you're not shooting from the hip. You have, like, an encyclopedia. And the fact that you guys can just – and maybe you're never really reading from the page. Maybe you just make me think that. You flip to another page, and there's red, there's green, there's yellow, there's blue. And Brian's like – sticking his finger down through there. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing right now? I don't even know what you know to what? say. I think, but here's the thing. I think the same thing when I see in-car videos of you guys at a race car. Fair. I think the same thing. It is honestly Fair. the same thing. I, it, it, and, and so, you know, whatever resources we have at our disposal, it, it's the same thing as when you guys put a tune-up in a race car. It's, it's you know, the, the story gets told on the racetrack, but that's just yelling out numbers, like it, having some context to what's going on. If somebody, you know, I mean, there's so many paths to go down here, but the, you know, those books and, and the, the stuff that we put together before the race, um, it's all there. It's all there is like a, it's all there is the, 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 the stuff that kind of puts the icing on the cake, right? The cake is the race. And then we can, we can dress it up a little bit with some cool stats and some cool information or, you know, dig into some stuff, but no, I, I appreciate you. And you hung out that whole day. It was awesome. It's awesome to have you and your pop in there. And, and it was, uh, that was a, that was a fun day. Well, you've said a lot of things, but nothing resonates more. And there's nothing that I hold on to more dearly than when you say Lyle Barnett gets J.R. Gray on a whole shot. <laughs> Fires so me the it? fuck up. Have you and seen you those alarm times. clocks where you can record something to wake you up in the morning? That's what Lyle has on his alarm clock every 100%. single morning. Every time, as you call it. Why the, bed, why the bed looks like a pop tent every morning. I understand now. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's yeah. ugly. Does that count for the, that count for the pecker all. ticker? First 30 yeah, seconds. That, that, we can use that on the pecker ticker. Yes. Nothing so, better than Lyle Barnett gets J.R. Gray on a whole shot. Just... <laughs> Man. Anyway, gonna, he's gonna get you one day. So when you talk about our, our start Probably. in small tire and outlaw racing and going around all yeah. the tracks, now a little more cleaned up, still getting to do that. What is what what stands out to you from the way it was to the way it is now? Do you have a preference? Everybody always asks me, do you like radial tire racing or slick tire racing more? And I can never give them an answer because it depends on the event, depends on what time of year it is, depending on if it's day 10 at a duck race or day three. Um, do you like and do you miss some of the smaller time stuff from back in the day, or do you like where you're at now? So, I mean, you know, for instance, this year I've done, you know, the pro mod stuff down at Bradenton to start the year, the NHRA stuff. I did Cletus and Cars at Indy. I did the the Wally Parks and Nostalgia Race at Bowling Green. Did the NHRA, you know, regular tour. Um, I did the the uh, race up there in in Boise last weekend. Um, and in years past, I've done, you know, in, in Michigan in, in 2020, I did the, I did the, the guaranteed $1.1 million bracket race. And so, you know, it sounds so cheesy and corny to say, but I really just love drag racing. So like, I, I, I there's no way in hell you can tell me that Steve Cisco winning a $1.1 million bracket race is any less cool than a guy winning a national event. Like when I called you winning Indy. When I when I called yep. your win at Indy, when you win you won Indy in, in the Shadow 2.0, you leave the start line, Gonzalez shakes the tires, and off you go, shoots out early through the through the finish line. It was freaking awesome. One and of the greatest Cisco. moments of my career. I mean, when God, Cisco, you just can't get a better. Yeah, it with, with Cisco's lined up in a in a 67 Nova that pulls wheel stands every run. In this one, this is one run, and I know there's a sweat, but this is one run. He's going to hold a check for $1.1 million if he does it. He's in a Nova that pulls wheel stands next to a guy in a, in a science style dragster, and he freaking beats him. It's unbelievable. So cool. My buddy Dan and Page. That's why. Yeah, Dan Page from New Hampshire beat Sean Cowie at Indy in 2016. I, I bawled like a child. It's, it's, the <laughs> one, it's really one of the only times I've ever actually lost it. And that's because right. Dan Page is one of those guys that ran those Saturday night shows with me at Epping. 
like when I was a kid and I got to do those Saturday night shows, Dan Page was running like a, you know, a kind of a blown big block Chevy drags or whatever. And then he's in an A fuel car and he wins the freaking U S nationals. And I'm calling the run. It was, it was it like, that was it for me. It was over with. So yeah, I mean, there's a degree of you always miss a little bit of your past. I think there's a part of me that misses some of that stuff, but I still get to do a lot of different things. Like talking about nostalgia, nitro, funny cars and looking at the, the young guys that drive those things that aspire to do other stuff. I mean, to me, that's great too. So I don't know. It's, it's a super corny evasive answer, but like, calling those races down at Bradenton with, with, with Al is freaking great. Like that, that's, that's, that's the type of stuff I would have never dreamed about as a kid. And it's totally different than being in the booth and calling a race on Fox. It's totally right. different thing. So and it's that, that is why drag racing is the greatest sport on earth. Right yeah. There. Is that explanation? Yeah. And speaking of the old days, most of you may not know that loans has not always had the glorious side of the announcing. I have a picture that we're going to put up. <laughs> That I have been saving for a rainy day. Of, <laughs> back when loans would have to do more than just sit in the booth. This is a picture from, I'm not going to put the year up here, but it's got my old crew chief and hopefully future crew, oh, crew chief Billy oh, Stockton in it. <laughs> and we're at a race and we actually won the event and I'm walking across and I can tell your walk when you're heading somewhere, whether or not you're in costume. So if you think Brian Loans does not oh, care dude. about his work, this right here, this right here shows that he's all in on uh, the announcing. Look, look, Billy's even like, what in the hell do you have on? How it's did you the get the flip-flops for me. Yeah, yeah. You look like a mix between baby Jesus and Merlin. <laughs> but and Dumbledore. I'll never, that, we were headed to the winner's circle. Yeah. Yeah. I had more fun laughing at you. Oh, yeah. The winner's circle than anything. But that's the that's that the thing. Hurt. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. You got to be able to uh, to have fun at it. And those and those races, and and listen, the COVID eight, the Magic eight in twenty twenty. I will I will go to my grave telling you how important those races were. They and saved they, they and saved it more of motorsports than people know. I I agree with you one hundred percent. And if you remember the first one. Wade Moody and I were in the hazmat suits. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. I did not I, believe me. About, I looked for a photo. Six hundred degrees, and uh, trust me, I don't. I don't deal well with that. I, I schvetz a little bit under a light, uh, and you put me in. A, you put me in a rubber suit in ninety degree heat. It was a very ugly situation inside that suit. But no, those were. I mean, to me, look, it, it was pretty. We were pretty deep down a hole then, right? And that yeah. was like around May June of that year, and it was like, you know, to me, it, it kind of played a really good example on the fact that you can do this and you can get out there and do something. And I, you know, those were, those, those were fun weekends. <laughs> and I mean, like you got to put yourself there when you talk about how Rocky, I mean, people were saying that motorsports was done. People were saying yeah. that we were done racing. NHRA yeah. was going away. PDRA was going away. No more radio races. Right. And everybody kind of pulled together and it was tough. We had to park trucks and trailers far apart from each other and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was, it showed that we love our sport enough to yeah. do whatever it takes to keep it going. No, and absolutely. Those were fun times. Uh, I've actually, that Magic 8 trophy ball is right here. Like, and I, awesome. I, it's one of my favorite races I've ever won. Marcus Bird is still mad at me because I beat him in the final at that race. Uh, but those were good times. That was good. They time. were good times. They were good times. I'm, I'm thankful to have been there because it was, um, you know, it, it was one of those things where, you know, obviously the way that Florida did stuff, the way that Massachusetts did stuff was a little different uh, at that time. Slightly. And so, you know, it was like, I remember landing for the first one of those and it was like, oh, wait. Oh wait, this is cool. The world we're, is still we're alive. Open, right. Yeah. We're I was open. like, can we go eat at this restaurant? They're like, well, yeah, just go inside and eat. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you just you just have to order yeah. alcohol. That was the rule. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, and uh, trust me, I, I abided. I did follow the rules. <laughs> but yeah, it was those um those races were those races were important and they were cool and they were fun and they were totally off the wall for sure. Heck yeah. Um I know these guys got a lot of questions. I'm going to just keep keep talking if they don't ever cut me off. But where do you I think, think we – Okay, I'm going to ask this one, then I'll let you go. That's where do lot. you think we are – because I get differing opinions on this all the time. Where are we at generation, gen, I can't say it, generationally in our sport? You know, we, we do a lot, and I see NHRA doing a lot to get youth involved, which I'm behind. I like that. I like yeah. – 
junior dragster racing and I like getting kids to come in and run street cars and stuff. Do you think that we're in a good spot with bringing youth into our sport? And if not, what do we all need to do to do better to get it going? Overall, I'm going to say the sport is in a good spot with bringing kids in. I think streetcar takeover, hugely, insanely successful, crushing it. Import faceoff, hugely, insanely successful. Chris Wall, uh, Cliff Wallace and that whole series, you know, I announced some of their earliest races and it was like it was they have done something with that that is freaking magic. They've resurrected and maintained an import scene that, um, you know, that that was people said was dead. Absolutely not. Um, I think the Cletus and Carr stuff, I did the one in Indy, it was phenomenal. I mean, there was 10,000 kids there. 10,000 kids came in to watch, and they only allowed like nine. There was only like 90 cars in the actual Cletus drag race, and then you had the burnout contest, and then on Sunday we did the stock car race or whatever. Saturday we did the stock car race. But it was like – it was it was phenomenal. And it was the, it was the definite re- reaffirmation. Look, I got two sons that are teenagers. They love cars. Like the, this, this whole thing isn't going away. It's just less to me, the, the way that the way that kids are getting into drag racing, which is the way kids have always gotten into drag racing since 1950s is less structure is better. Streetcar takeover, all these events, like older guys look at it and go, Oh, that's so chaotic. I don't want to do that. It's like, good. They don't want you there. You don't need to do that. Do your thing that you're comfortable doing and let these kids do the thing that they want to do. And just let them do it. But, you know, we got the streetcar takeover guys are, are doing a, a deal at um, at Topeka with us. Um, their their series is really great. And, you know, the the, the change in rules NHRA made with the street uh, late model street legal stuff, the nine second flat 150 rule as far as before you got to put a roll bar in your late model car, I think is a very big deal um, for a lot of reasons. Like the worst thing we can do is throw kids out of a drag strip because they're going too fast in their streetcar. It is it is the most discouraging anti growth thing we can possibly do. So the fact that now we've got these rules set up that it allows them to go fast and, and be welcome and have an NHRA license or whatever they want to do it. They don't have to have the license. They can get it. If they want, but it's like, you know, I don't fear for the future of the sport at all. I, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think yeah. that th- what's, what's, what the big question is, is taking those guys and what's the next step for them. And that I, I can't answer, but I know where they are now. I just don't know where they're going to go. And I'm with you. I think the future is bright in our sport. Uh, I know from from running a racing team and having to, to to deal with just the getting parts and getting people. Yeah, that is the hardest thing that we have. And for it to be like that tells me that we're 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 in an upward trajectory and growing. I am with you. I love to see the kids in the sport. I often ask myself, how can we get them from there to there? And you know, are we doing the right stuff to do that? Um, but I want kids to like cars and want to come race yeah. for as long as I'm on the earth. Yeah. Um, look, to me, to me, the argument of the kids, the kids not liking car argument is made by old people that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And I just said the F word. Here we go. Hey, um, we got but, the F word. Welcome to the Shake and Bake Show. Welcome to the Shake and Bake Show. Let's so go. The, the kids, the kids not liking cars thing is because they, they, they're only looking at one aspect. There are, how many thousands of YouTube channels of kids doing stuff, people dragging. There's a whole, YouTube, I mean, the whole, the whole YouTube universe of dragging a car out of the weeds, making it run and driving it around is like, there are, there are 10,000 people in America making their living doing that now, like every day. Yeah. It's an yeah. insane thing. So I got an, I got an argument t- with an old timer the other day about this. He was telling kids don't like cars anymore. Cars got carburetor. I showed him a guy with a YouTube channel. That's got a Mitsubishi eclipse. Okay. It has 10 million followers and I'm trying to get to 40,000. And I said, I'm a car guy as much as anybody. I can't get to 40,000. This kid plays with his car all the day, all the time, every day. And he's got 10 million followers. Yeah. So I'm with you. Yeah, no, it's, it's there. And, and it's like anything, you know, like the, the, the people that hated Elvis in 1955. I mean, you just go, music and cars are kind of the same thing. If you look through history, like the old people didn't like the kids' music. The old people never liked the kids' cars. It is, you can document it from 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 then to now. It's a fact. That's that's a freaking statement of wisdom right there. Somebody quote yeah. that Put shit. Put that on a shirt. t-shirt. Yeah, David, Brian, right? Put it on a shirt. Brian, you've yeah. sat in the pilot seat, just like you talked about, and seen some of the best entertainment at drag strips, Cletus's yep. deal, Stevie and I have been a part of some of that and the following that they have and, and what we experienced. We were in, in comparison to the people that were there, Stevie and I were probably atop the nobody list, a bottom of who was recognized, right? But yep. we were there 
and we got to experience it was awesome. But you made a you made a post earlier this week and talked about and you get to see it, like I said, from the driver's seat, the dysfunction that goes on and then the yeah. absolute just perfection. And I think Tyler Crossnow does one of the better jobs. I'm not saying the best, but I think he his ingenuitive mind and what he has yeah. going on at events kind of makes things go somewhat seamless. Yep. Um, but you've seen it from just absolute turmoil, just yeah. complete shit show, right? And then you've seen – you talked about it at Firebird Raceway. They yeah. do just such a fantastic sure. job. And Courtney, Courtney and I talked about it before the show started where Tyler had a situation happen, which probably maybe you yourself have not experienced yet. Like literally the computer system in front of your face – yeah, catches on fire, right? Like it back feeds, it short circuits, and it's on fire in your I face. Have, I might have broken an amp or two, but I've never seen the computer actually catch on fire. Right. Never and seen that's, it. And that's a Tyler Cross. And we've, shut, and we've shut the shit down, right? You know, so Tyler Cross knows like hot dog eating contest. Okay, yeah. so we just divert. Now that in itself turns right. into a complete and utter disaster, right? Like who could have nearly that? dies? Yeah, right, who could have you know, predicted that? But you've seen it all, you know, and, and you yeah. understand. And and some of that falls onto your shoulders, right? Like, okay, you see it just turning into a complete shit show. But see, so here's it's what Brian Lone's it's Brian Lone's responsibility yeah. at this point, right, to even save what's going on before people start yeah. heading for the gates. Now, granted, they've already paid their money to get in, right. so the tracks made their money. But you want those people that have paid money to come back two and three and four and five and eight times again, right? Exactly. But he, here's what I'm going to say. Like, all of us – myself included when we were in our 20s we all loved the chaos agreed we all I loved the do. chaos That's when we true. were in our 20s well yeah you still do <laughs> no i'm saying i i you're right I, we did but, but and and we did and there was and there was something that we all loved about yeah shit we're going to run this final at 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning but then we get to our 30s and we think what the f what are we doing? I should here? be in bed, dude. What are we I doing? Damn, I should be four hours into sleep. But, you know, and and Stevie and I have had a, have had for years in the back channel conversations like, dude, what are we doing here? Like, this is not the way to do this. And you know, we talked. You and I talked about putting the the kind of shot clock in about staging time just to keep yeah. things moving and everything. But yeah, to your Lyle, to your point, I mean, sometimes there's no saving it, and you you just embrace it. You embrace the fact that welcome. We are all part of this giant shitty storm Shit and, and that's what you, get to, you get to tell your friends that you were here to experience it um you know i i don't think an announcer saves anything but i think a good a good operator like Ty, like tyler tyler did all the right things like okay boom here's he an idea and you know who knew that there was a a, a, a gag reflex issue going to happen in the hot dog eating context and, and someone the respiratory was issue. <laughs> and but when you, you talk see, Ryan, but you see right. so many you see so many people you know, and, and the NHRA has Jason Logan in the low zone, right? Yeah. Like we yeah. can pitch to that. But yep. how often could you send an announcer, maybe not yourself, but somebody there at the track with a wireless mic, right? And just go to the base yep. of the tower yep. and walk straight out and just talk to somebody, right? You know, like yes. instead of, yeah, we'll be back once they clean up this yep. old down down there at 67 yep. Nova. He really ordered down good. Oh. And set the yeah. mic down, right? Like you no, could listen. you could send somebody out, just yes. talk to somebody. Hey, who are you here to watch? Or who do you think's gonna win today? Or where'd you come from? Right? And that, you know, or, if you're or a free t-shirt, like we're not gonna have the shell game on the Megatron, right? Right. right. But something <laughs> could yeah. be said for a free t-shirt, right? There's there things that can be done. No, it's 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 the t-shirt cannon, it's the hot dog eating contest. It's at Epping one time we we, we always would have stuff kind of on the side, like if we have an oil down, we gotta do something. So we pulled guys out of the stands for a, a chugging contest. Now there was a Coca-Cola sponsored race, so they assumed they were gonna come down and, and chug some Cokes. It was a bottle of mustard. So we put two guys in the starting line. <laughs> man, that's each, horrible. Out of each of a bottle of mustard. That's awesome. the, first, the first guy to finish the mustard was gonna get like ten bucks. And well, of course, I'll crush you in yeah, a yeah. mustard chugging contest. One guy gets it. Bet money right now. But you know, bet money, point. Brian. Shut. <laughs> bet money right now. That I can't. How much? I can chug anything faster than you. Bourbon, <sighs> beer, mustard. <sighs> any right, of we it. should have our own conversation because this is just going. <laughs> Are happen. you kidding me? You still said you were going to chug a beer faster than me. We, you're scared to that's show a, up. Because that, that, that's a factual statement. Listen, you monkey clowns. We got Brian Ann on Brainerd. the show. Hey, yeah, first of all, let's go ahead and put this to bed. And Brainerd, 
me and Lyle are going to have a beer chugging contest, and I'm going to. And Brian Lowndes, you're going to commentate it. I will officiate it. I will officiate it. Attention fans. And Stevie right, Fast chokes, just like J.R. <laughs> Gray on the start line. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when we talk about I, – I remember one event in particular, uh, a standalone outlaw race. It was the Snowbird Nationals, I think, 2021, when Victor just started getting them really big. Yeah. We ran – five or six hours of wonderful pro mod racing stands were full yeah. done at six 30 and you and I talked about it. Why can't it always be like this? And it, it yeah. can't always go like that. No. But then you have the other events where you run the final at 3 AM. I think that both of them play to a different level of crowd. I always say that the fans are the boss sell what the fans want to buy. And it, you're in a different market every place we go. So that's not always the same. Never. Everybody's never going to be happy. Um, but with that, I want to segue in a little bit. I know Courtney wants to talk about a, a little bit of this. I think doing the same thing in business forever is bad. And what you can see in our industry specifically right now is a, is a shift, not away from how things have always been, but I think moving into new markets. We got big standalone races coming up. Snowbirds yep. are huge. We have to limit the car count at that. Um, you know, huge radial tire races have been going on. I think that we have we're, we're moving into that market. What do you think about that? And then I'll let Courtney go on what she wants to talk about. Look, I, I think that people racing cars is what we need. We need people on racetracks competing, right? And it doesn't matter if that's if that's a guy trying to win a million bucks in a bracket race, if that's a guy trying to win a quarter million bucks in a top fuel car, if that's a guy trying to win fifty grand at the Snowbirds or hundred grand at the World Series of Pro Mod, you need to have the cars on the racetrack. That's what drives this industry. That's what drives the, the, the guys who make the parts. It's what drives the guys who run the racetracks. And as we've seen over the last three months, the racetrack business is fragile. It's yeah. fragile. Yeah. And so anytime you can, you can reduce the fragility of the racetrack business by having big races, I, I, don't, I don't see how that's bad for drag racing. There's no way that a logically thinking person can ever say, well, a race is bad to have. It's it, that you cannot make that argument. It's an impossible argument to make. There's no such thing as a bad race in my mind. 100%. I'm agreed. I want to know. We haven't talked about this off screen yet. I thought about texting with you before oh, we did man. this, but when I, she says I, that, yeah. you're about to get your head blown off. I'm just telling you. I don't even know. No, I have no idea what it is. No, no neither I do I. I couldn't even like, imagine. Go ahead. <laughs> I cannot imagine. I just it's like when somebody know. says, I don't want to be disrespectful, but. Lyle's on crack and cannot drink beer faster than me. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but I'm Courtney and I can say whatever I want. Um, this race that we have been, I wanted to talk about it. Also, cheers to the new uh, cocktail there. Brian Loans is on number two. Um, we have no beer meter We've oh. gotten, we oh, announced this race. Way off you, on the beer meter We obviously knew it was going to happen. We announced this race. Um, things have been in the motion for a long time. There is a specific structure to this race that I think yep. – after it was announced, given the people in the industry and people who knew what was going on get it, but I think there's a little bit of a misconception of the purpose of this and why it's the pro race, why it's invite only, why we're going to have eight car fields and things of that sort. I want to get your God honest opinion, and I don't know what you're allowed to say here based on your ovals on your shirt and things of sort, but like I got no ovals, I'm oval free. I got a US perfect. Man. You got a Victor shirt on, so you're here to play, yeah, yeah. but. What we're you understand what we're trying to do here with this and the superstar shootout being yeah. top tier level stuff. What's your opinion on the backlash that we've gotten on kind of not doing a participation situation? All right, so so here it is. Um, yes. for me, the race format spectacular Friday, Saturday, nighttime, perfect sales job, real bad because. Look, the other day you posted up you want to be an Olympic gymnast and you're a kid, right? I did. Thanks okay. for looking. So, so you can't call it the Olympics and, and invite five countries. The Olympics is in America, China, and India. So what I the only I, I disagree with none of the event. I think the event is honest to God, I think the event is spectacular. I want to see the best guys racing for as much money as they can possibly win. I want to see those crew guys getting a fat bonus. I want to see all that stuff happening. But but don't don't try to sell me on this as it being like the Olympics and the greatest, most magnificent event of all time. It's an all star race. And it, and it should be to me in my mind, if, if 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 I got to run the whole the whole world of drag racing, I would sell this as the, the all star race because that's what it is. It is an all star race of the best of the best pro stock, 
top fuel funny car. Um, you know, I know, and listen, the bike guys were pretty spun out about not being a part of it. We kind of know that you saw it. You saw people yep. get that were kind of in their feelings about that. And, and maybe at some point down the line that happens, I don't know, but I just think that, you know, I think that in the event of, in the event of projecting that race, I don't necessarily see it as this transformational event in drag racing. I see it as uh, an epic one time, not even one time, an epic start of an all-star race that we haven't had before. You know, I would we, see it as like an exhibition of our well, sport, yeah. of, but, of the top tier of our sport. But you think about back in the day when I can I compare this to when the all-star team was selected sure. for uh, my countywide or statewide yeah. baseball team, right? Yep. Like not everybody was invited. You had to be an all-star. You had to be a standout on your given team right. to be selected. I'm not even advocating. I'm not even advocating everybody being invited. I'm not. I'm, I'm advocating. I, I like what this is. I really do. I like all that this is. The one thing that makes me cringe is when it gets sold as the greatest drag you. race ever. Because – and, and that's all. And, and, and that's 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 the one hiccup I have with it, where it's like if 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 we're going to call it the greatest drag race ever, then it's like, well, shit, we're going to have a couple of dozen top fuel cars at Indy, you know, and, and, and it's like and I realize the money is the money is the money is the money. That's what this whole sport runs on. It's what it runs on. And and that is important. I'm not discounting that at all. It is absolutely 100 percent important. The only thing that just that that makes me go, ugh, it's like don't don't pee in my ear and tell me it's raining right you're gonna have the best of the I, best here. just oh, tell me it's just tell me it's the best of the best and don't and don't tell me you're gonna transform drag race this changes everything well yeah I mean, no. the stampede of speed guys are gonna have a a, a a country concert on sunday night with fifty thousand friggin people at it you know Which what i mean gonna change stampede everything speed is awesome that, that shit is there and, and and i'm i hope i don't get myself into shit for saying this no. but i you know I, I'm obviously a part of this, of what's going down on the flow side. Yeah. I'm not a member of Pro. I support what, what right. they're doing because they've they've chosen us as an outlet to do it. I'm going to yeah. do my best to promote it. Absolutely. But I totally, totally get what you're saying. And, yeah. and again, this is Courtney Ender speaking. This is not yeah. flow speaking. This is not pro speaking. I think that we're tiptoeing around. Oh, boy, here we go. I think we're tiptoeing around making it clear of that we want not necessarily the greatest drag race on the planet, but we want to – exhibit our sport in ways yes. that we've never done it before so we want to make sure that we have a to b runs we have no oil yeah. downs we have things that we can control in a timely manner and yeah. i think we're using fluff words to describe that when we don't want to hurt any kind of feelings of saying like hey you got to be a touring driver you got to keep your shit in one piece and you got to yeah. be able to get your shit done in a timely manner and afford to make all the runs and that's yeah. what we're this doing. this is going to be a bang on show there is no doubt in my in my mind, there is absolutely no doubt in, in any molecule of my being to understand that this is going to be a bang on throw down effing awesome race. It, it is. But again, I just go back to my only my only qualm of the whole thing. It's like I and, and, and listen, Wes is a great evangelizer. Wes is Wes is an evangelist and he is a good one. And, you know, we, we did the pro, the PDRA awards a few years ago and Wes would have had those guys at a bucket of Kool-Aid at the door by, yeah. when, by the time he was done with his speech. And it was a good speech and it got him riled up. And that's and that's what a guy who's passionate about this business does. But when I look at how when I look at like to say this is going to build the sport. Yes, you're going to get people to watch it. No, no, no question in my mind. But like I think when Stevie has built the, you know, the, uh, you know, the Taj Stevie down there in, in Georgia, I'm pretty sure he started building it with the floor, not the roof. Right. Correct. And one thing me and Lones have talked about a long time and the, the behind the scenes is people do not give a shit about how fast the race cars are. The, the fans do not care. They, the fans that we are trying to, yeah, I mean, I'm a mechanical guy and I'm a numbers guy and I yeah. pay attention. Oh, somebody went faster, but the type of crowd that you're attracting at that race could care less how fast they are. So you got to be careful when you invite the elite, when you put them on a perfect surface, let me tell you 
how much it can demise our sport by having cars run on a perfectly manicured surface all the time. Look what it did to RVW when we said we're not going to run cars on any mediocre tracks anymore. We're going to get the track as perfect as it'll go, and we're going to run them as fast as it'll go, and there's no aborted runs, and there's no spinning the tires. It sucks. So we, we have to – I like all these standalone races, but let's not lose sight of the fact of the connection between the motorsports competitor mm-hmm. and the fans. And that's Here's what my, we have to do. Here's my question is what does this do to the World Series of Robot? Right? Like, well, listen, in, in, for, a, in for, a general for sense, sense I, I can't yeah. – Everything that's been said – and all things considered, right? Like for the side show, let's call it, that was put on. And it's been a fucking good one, right? Yeah. Like the World Series of Pro Mod has been so good. And I've been so honored to have been a part of the most recent one, qualified for it. You know, like it was it was a big show. But what does this do for the World Series? Does the World Series of Pro Mod continue or does this belittle it, right? And it now that this – and I hope the Pro Series continues on, right? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, this is the entertainment business. We talk about this all the time. Like, asses in the seats is all that matters. Whether I'm in a Pro Mod, whether Stevie and I double dick it on a motorcycle. Yeah, got it. Like, who cares, okay. right? You know, like, I'll grab I it around the Double race, dick like, a motorcycle. Yeah, I don't even know what you're that. talking about. They're probably you know, not going to do it's, it's two of us on one, bud. Brian, you know I'll let I mean? you go like, first. I'll, I'll let you drive. But like, if does this talks. hurt? Like, what does this do to the World Series of Pro Mod? Because that's what Stevie and I care about at the moment, right? Like, well, listen, let's have let's a, you have know, feel right. Let's 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 just apply. Let's just apply the obvious logic here. Let's just apply the obvious logic, and and, and maybe this is going to make people's stomachs turn or whatever. But it's it's not good for that race. If I'm a guy buying a ticket, if I'm a guy buying a ticket, and I'm going to buy I'm a gonna ticket, buy my talk- and you're <laughs> going to go to and you're going to go to Bradenton for one time a year, right? If I'm if I'm picking one shot to go there, and listen, there's a lot of great dedicated Pro Mod fans out there. I'm not belittling that or anything, but there is still no greater draw in the sport on any level than fuel cars. Oh, yeah. it's just they're awesome. fuel altered, and and it, uh, it it is what it is, and it's been that way now for sixty something years. We talk about things, you know, things need to change and things evolve. Yes, they do. But that fuel and what those cars do to people and what the experience they deliver. What they do to me. Right. Like, well, I still well, run to the fence when they run fuel cars. And I've seen absolutely. thousands of pairs oh, of fuel cars. So, <laughs> so yeah. So I, I don't think it I don't think it, it it does harm that race. There's no logical way to say it doesn't harm the race. You can't sit here and be like, I think they'll be okay. The race will be okay. Every competitor that wants to be in that race will absolutely be in that race. All the Pro Mod guys still will want now and forever to win the oh, World Series of Pro Mod. Oh, but on the backside of it, you can't tell me that there's going to be a drop in the spectator count there. You can't. But, and that's what I worry about. And I, I'm not saying that Pro Mod is all I care about, but at this moment, it's what's well, closest to my heart, right? You know, yeah. like Stevie and I, that's what we love, you know, and, and I don't want any of the limelight to shine anywhere but there. So, Granted, the sport of drag racing, period, is what is all that matters. But, like, I agree with Wes. Pro Modified is the universal language, I think. Yeah. You know, like, it, yeah. it shines across the globe. It does. And, and what I fear, and it's only because I'm not a part, right? You know, if I was a top fuel driver, if I had a seat in a top fuel car that was going to be invited there, then I would, I'm not going to say I would care less, but... I would be less worried. It would be different. So right. riddle me this. If, and again, this is me speaking here on this podcast. This is, I am just on the flow end. I have no preempt knowledge of what's going to happen. If this race had more races, if the pro races had more and we moved and, and things just based on, obviously, Bradenton is a hot spot for this time yeah. of year. And that's why it was an easy answer. And Victor's a, an easy guy to deal with and all that. But if it's, if it's moved and things are coordinated, is that the better option or is when it is together at this time of year, kind of combining those, like which, what's your opinion on that? See, you know, to me, to me that this is what we I do agree. in drag racing and in, in drag racing, our greatest strength is our most massive weakness. And that is the fact that everybody to their credit thinks that they're the show. And, yep. and so, 
it, it's why it's why when we go and have rain at a national event and the super gas guys only get one time hit and go into eliminations, we get They're burned busy. to the effing ground. Yeah. And, it's, and so and so this is what we do. What we do is we, we, we keep bringing people in and in and in and we keep, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. We keep throwing our arms out. And then we wonder, but then, why, but then why can we only pay a guy that, that wins top fuel 50, 58 grand a year, whatever it is, a race, a national event. But Amen. the total purse at the national event is like a million bucks. Like, so and I, any, tree, any tree over the course of the year pays over $30 million in purse money. I'm not reading off a script. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that. I'm just here to, to, to say that it's like it, the guy stands up and goes, I only won 1200 friggin' dollars. And I get it. And I get you only won 1200 bucks. And the top fuel guy says, I only won 50 something grand. And it cost me a hundred and a quarter, a hundred and a half to be here. I get all that. And that's why our biggest weakness as a sport is also the thing that's the biggest strength. Mm. I got to give it to Wes Buck in this because through the planning, now I am speaking from Courtney Andrews planning committee. He made it very clear that no matter where this race was, what we were going to do with it, that he didn't want ProMod there because he made it a promise and a very clear motive that at the World Series of ProMod, he made that race so that the ProMod guys were the star and were the show. And I appreciated him standing on that because a lot of the fan feedback's been like, fuck pro stock, where's pro mod and all these things that they're saying. And it's like, man, there, there are bigger pictures here. And unfortunately that time of year, there's only a select places that we can go. And I hate to saturate the market there, but it's just the way it is. I agree with his logic. I'm not, I can't assail his logic. And, and, you know, when you when you have an event like this, to me, people people make associations is what am I going to see with this? Like, what do I when I see a do I also see B or C? Yeah. And when people see fuel cars, they have a, they have a, a an expectation. There's probably going to be pro stock cars there, too. Like they 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 travel as a group for the most part. So I get it. And it would be a giant disservice to the pro mod crew to put them in this thing. Agreed. Huge question. Question on purse. When we talk, you always hear me of any class. I'm always raising hell about trying to figure out how to pay more because as you know, if the last show I was just reading out payouts, the first NHRA pro mod race paid $10,000 to win. Um, Jason Scruggs won our last NHRA pro mod and won $10,000 23 years later, the cost of a turnkey pro mod used to be 150. Now it's 450. So I'm always on the payout front. The, when when we talk about the hype that the pro race is getting on payout, and I don't know this, so I'm just asking, does anyone know if the competitors entering there are putting up the entire purse like the World Series of Pro Mod? Do you, does anyone know that? I'm asking because I don't. I mean, know. I, I don't know. I don't know. The, I know there's a buy-in, but I don't know. I don't know where the, the I don't know where the whole pot's coming from. I know yeah. that the guys ended up no. paying to be there, but I don't know. I don't know the whole math. There's people no are people are yeah people are paying to be there, but there's there's a, a lot that goes into that. They took into effect of testing comes with it, this comes with it, that kind of deal, and and making sure the West Buck syndrome of the 2018 or 19 World Series of Vermont and Denver, where everybody said they were coming and then nobody came, kind of deal. I went everyone he had in Denver, so I have no sympathy so, for anybody. I, I agree that there were a lot of thousand dollars worth of fuel. My sister up. included. Our team did not go. Um, And just kind of solidifying, like, you got to be a big boy and you got to pony up to want to play. And there are going to be ways that when you qualify or when you whatever, we're going to we're going to put out the whole system here shortly. But it's just like you got to You got to put your big boy panties on to come play. Listen, the math, you know, and and again, I'm 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 not a uh, some guy that emailed me and accused me of not being a mathematician because I talk about 10,000 in drag 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 Get over yourself. But look, if I had to if I had to make an educated guess, I would guess a, a guy who loses in the first round of this thing is still putting twenty grand in his pocket. Like if you break the purse down, that to me, you know, when you start doing the drag racer math, I, I feel like a I feel like a first round loser at this race is still putting twenty thousand dollars in his pocket, which is fantastic. To me and you, that's real fucking money. Well, <laughs> that's, that's real money. Listen, there's a there's a great like, movie. Go to Andy on that. There's a great movie called The Edge. If you ever seen this movie, Anthony Hopkins is in it. It's really good. But there's one line in that movie that I heard and I never forgot. And he looks at this guy and he says, "Never feel bad for a guy with his own airplane." And so I'm not going to cry for the guy who wins twenty grand and owns his own airplane. He he right. he's getting his twenty k, and maybe that's not enough because he lost in the first round. But he's still getting on a jet and flying home. So it's not like he's breaking his ass. Again, the the structure hasn't been released yet. It will it will absolutely. It's yeah. not going to be something where people are making money off this. Believe me, teams are going to pony up. Yeah. Sponsors of teams are going to pony up. Everybody involved in this race is going to have some tooth in it. But 
you're absolutely right, Brian. It's not going to be like people talked about it online of like, oh, if they don't win, they're not getting anything. This is a race put on by racers for racers. And that's the main prerogative of it is a little bit of early season testing, a little bit of cool stuff we get to do on flow yeah. and a little bit of extra money. Yeah. And, and uh, like I said, I think the format, I think who's going to be there, all of that to me is like spot on zero qualms of that. It's just like, just sell it for what it is. And that's my first, badass, that's my first big badass, show with a microphone. Badass all-star race. All right, Brian. All right, let's transition on from proing. All right. Before, we're cannibalizing loans this whole night, but before we go, I am going to put your ass on the spot, and we're going to talk about Brainerd Pro Mod, what we have coming up. This is our first road to the championship. It's the yes. first time we've ever had any format like this. When we entered Brainerd at the last – event we raced there we had 12 cars we've got 18 cars uh we have so far in pro mod been really internally working behind the scenes to make sure we have full field all year yes. i feel like our class is growing i want to know let me see if this is the current points yes there's the current top 10 i want to know brian loans let's pick top three or four you think have Woo! the best shot to run win Brainerd. And we'll all pick because this is not, oh, this is not NHRA Brian Loams. No, this watch is, us all race. Who listen, do you so, think's so hot here's, and who do you think's not right now in pro so Here's the deal. I will, I will let you in on a little inside secret. So, so Sean Lang that is in some super secret fight club, big money fantasy drag racing league with some guys. Right. 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 And so he comes to me and goes, who should I be looking at a pro mod? <laughs> So I've helped him win some freaking money. Right, right, right. I've, been, I've been okay. I've been okay this year. Look, I, Justin Bond has been on a great on a on having a great season. But to me, when you have a big break in a season like ProMod has always had, and they've just had, now they're going to come back. It, it it doesn't necessarily translate, right? Well, when you're on one side of the river and you have to cross the river in this break and you come back, to me, you can be a totally different person. You could have business concerns. You could have different shit going on in your life. You could have things going on. They're going to take you out of the headspace you were in. I'm never betting against Jason Lee. That is a really good freaking car. I think the guy's nails. I think the guy is is having kind of a moment in this class and I, in this in this realm. I think he feels like he has something to prove, which maybe he does. Uh, Castellana, you know, I I wish I could I wish I could put more on Castellana because I love the guy and I love his history and I love the fact that one phone call could probably make me evaporate like live time off of this Absolutely. off of this, <laughs> off of this deal. Um, and there's Christopher Thorne, right? And so Thorne has had all this the shit thrown at him this year with these guys that are gonna they're gonna stage against him, they're not gonna stage against him. He's managed to keep himself pretty centered. They did not have the beginning of the year they had last season, and yet there they are, 20 points out of the lead. So my call down the stretch is do not sleep on Jason Lee. That's what I'm saying right now. I'm thinking the man who was 30 points out of number one is the guy that everybody should be afraid of right now. That's my call. You So you hit the nail on the hood, the nail, the nail on the head. Jason Lee came in and really shook our class up. I did all the Robin Hood stuff. Oh, it's great. That I was love great. it when people come out and do not sandbag and want to win. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. They're coming out and they're running that car like they want to win. They're not worried got about nothing tomorrow. To lose. They're going out there and having fun. They got good budget. Yeah. And uh, he's driving the shit out of it. Yep. And they got they got a, a little butt hurt when they got some weight hung on them. Yep. But at the end of the day, I'm not sleeping on that team either. I yep. think I that agree. they have. I think w when they came in, I told I, I went and told them, and I told everybody on this podcast they're really going to struggle with this level of racing in quarter mile. And they did. Yep. They had lo engine longevity problems, transmission problems, fluid leaking problems, all the stuff that we normally fight for a year. I think that they have used the off time to refine some of that and they're coming out swinging. So like, I, I like that pick. I'm interested to see where Justin Bond's headspace is after the break. He came out on a tear. Yep. Uh, I, I, I said on the last show that he used up all his ammo, but, but with a, with a six, eight week break, you can reload that gun. I'm really impressed with Dimitri and how he ended the last two events. I am. He was driving the wheels off the car. He was double O's driving, the last two really well. Last two runs and the car was competitive. Um, Sydney's been ma making a head of steam. We've had six or eight weeks to develop on that program, uh, and I don't think you can count out Castellano or Jose. I was going to say Castellano and Frank have had time. 
Well, and they got a hot rod race car. They got the baddest door car ever constructed that they're racing down through there. So um, let me ask, let me ask you a question, Stevie. Is the hardest thing you've ever done lead the points? Is that is it is it as really? is it as crummy in a good way that I think it might be for a guy like you? It is. I I hate leading from ahead. I hate it. I have no target to shoot at. All I have to do is look over my shoulder and try not to screw up, and I absolutely yeah. hate it. When that's I destroy what, that's the what, field, I'm not discounting Bond, but I feel like he's in a spot now that he's never been in, and that and that is a not a comfortable place for anybody to be. That's the only. That's thing. honestly, we and God bless. This is the longest we've ever gone without saying her damn name. But last year with Erica's season coming in so dominant, and then the countdown, I've never seen her more worried going into Reading than she ever has been in her entire career. Cause same thing. She's got nothing to shoot for. Everybody's just coming in hot. Like that sucks. I was more scared about losing the championship in 19. And I won the championship by eight rounds than I was when I had to come from behind and outrun yep. Brandon Snyder for the championship in 20. I had more confidence in 20 because I knew where he was at and he knew I was coming. You cannot put pressure on anybody from ahead. You just can't do it. And, and, and it's, Justin Bond, we're going to find out. I think he's a great competitor. I think he's a great driver. I think they got a great team, have a lot of data. Uh, I think that there's a lot of teams that have been holding back, and I think when whoever wins Brainerd is going to be in the cat seat to win a championship. I, there's, there's the, t I mean, there's guys that are not in the top ten that are in the countdown, but any one of those top ten guys can come out and blow their head off. What about you, Lyle? So if if Chris Thorne wins Brainerd, yeah, does he lose the championship? I don't know. Nope. I, I, I don't – I think if you look at the progression of that team from where they started in the beginning of the season, they're a locomotive. And they're yeah. just chuk, 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 just chunking on to the front. And, but Chris Thorne, like if you've – and I've raced him for the past two years, you know, and he can, he can win, he can lose. You can walk by and smack him right in the mouth, you know, and no walk reaction. back by 10 minutes later and he's just like, hey, buddy, mm -hmm. good to see you. The air, yeah, the density altitude that we're going to have in Brainerd will give the Pro Charge combination an advantage there. They won't have that advantage Thorne, in St. Louis. Then Chris they won't thinks. have that advantage in Vegas, but they're going to have an advantage in Brainerd. There's nothing anybody can do about it. The Pro Charger just runs good in hot weather. Thorne, it's going to be 80 Thorne. degrees and hot. The last so, time I bet against Justin Bond, he called me out and then won the race and then told me what a fucking idiot I was. So I don't really know what to say here. <laughs> so you're scared to pick is what you're saying. No, I completely agree with Brian about the Jason thing. I think that there's something to be said for people who get into a space like what you said with the Robin Hood thing and have something to prove with, with nothing to lose. Like that's a dangerous yeah. fucking combination with somebody yeah. drive like he can and what they have. And you got to look at the Maybe. others, right? You got to look at the other side of the coin. All the teams that have been running that combination for 15 years and somebody just steps up and out qualifies you by 900s and smashes your teeth in the ground. What does those teams do? Do you what spend your eight? Do you right? spend your eight weeks and work on your car and say we're not going to let somebody that just show? Imagine if I, if me and Loans teamed up and went on the PGA Tour. We went out there and said, "All right, they're going to let us in." Me and you are showing up at the U.S. Open, and if we go out there and kick the shit out of Tiger Woods, like Tiger Woods is not going to like that, okay? And that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a lot of the the guys that come out and just maybe had a little extra sand leaking out from the trunk. Maybe there'll be less sand after the break. I'm excited to see. I think I think we're gonna know a lot after Brainerd. I know I'm gonna crush Lyle on you know, a beer chugging contest. Listen, I know, I know you guys, know you, guys like to, you guys like to bust on Ricky and, and call him far the time and stuff, but you you kind of went there for a second, Steve. You, you dipped into the Ricky pool, and I will tell you this: <laughs> one of the one of the greatest top end moments of my entire life was at English Town in any trade pro mod. I'm down there with a the microphone. It's probably 2014 or so. Jason Hamstra beats Ricky in a, like the first round. Now he beats him on a whole shot, but Ricky doesn't know that. Ricky's car is faster. <laughs> right, so right. Hamstra, Hamstra's still young, but he was real young then. And he goes over and Ricky's kind of got his head in his car. He's like, good race. And Ricky spins around and he starts screaming at him. You sandbagging MF. And he's like, I worked my whole winter. I burned up 9,000 pistons and you guys went to bed and you went on vacation. And he, and he went on this sermon, but it was like, it, but his, it was the greatest sandbagging rant of all time. And Hampshire was like, dude, I'm like 19. I was just saying good race. <laughs> Ricky chewed him. Sounds up. like a pro mod <laughs> meeting after Ricky's out qualified to field by 600. By, by a 10th. Still wants the 18 inch wide wheels, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that you will see everyone come out in Brainerd with no sand leaking out. We're going to know 
nice. where those cars are stacked oh, yeah. up in Brainerd. It's, it's show your nuts time for sure. Uh, we're going to hang all of the balls out. Sydney, yeah. I already told them, I said, Let's we're bringing do... six motors and I'm going to use all six of them. Which is cool because normally that just happens in the zoo. So now it's going to happen in the zoo and on the racetrack at the same time. It's going to be you a, right, if, you, if you were a drag racing fan and you like door cars, Brainerd is where you want to be. <laughs> Amen. So it's gonna be Are we good. having a shake and bake at the zoo? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Maybe we get yeah. loans to announce the meet DDT and Lyle teabagging his ass in the beer chugging contest, and we'll have a shake and bake show. Steve, I'll right. your ass in the park. I think we only have one more question for Brian Loans. <laughs> okay, Loans. I, you want to ask it since I always do? Listen, can, can no, I? Can no, I, no, you no, can't ask you, I'll mute you. All right. Many, many heated conversations over this. Everybody's been on the show. I've asked them because Lyle has a very he, a large fear I mean, look for at smoke. Him. And flames. Yeah. I want to know if you go into the, the Mexican restaurant, do you like or do you hate fajitas? I look the man in the eye and I tell him to make it look like a Motley Crew concert in 1986. I want an effing fog machine coming off that plate. When it comes <laughs> Mount Kilimanjaro! I want, I want, I want like a clean bath. I want my skin to look better after I've leaned over the plate. I want, I want all of it. I want a light show. The whole, the whole works. I only have to ask for this show today, and I just said yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Lyle. Once again, Loans has proved my point. You are not climbing this mountain. The masses are with us. Hill. Oh, I'll climb it, and I'll kick all three of you off of it. <laughs> Listen, you're in a you're in a you're in a silent fajita minority right here, Lyle. If That's I beat you, it's you in a silent fajita I, minority. Like if I beat says, you in this nothing beer says contest, I'm not gonna get angry. laid when I get home, like going to eat fajitas. At the hey, let me if, tell you something. As the only bitch on this call, we do fine in that front. Nothing, yeah, nothing. Like coming home is calling like butthole. If <laughs> if I beat you in chugging beer in Brainerd, you're going to the Mexican joint and you're ordering Mount Kilimanjaro. Bet. I'm and listen, the Mexican, the Mexican I'm, food in Brainerd is super authentic. It's going to oh, be. Yeah. 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 That's exactly where I, I don't even care what it tastes long. like. I'm going to pour a gallon of nitro in that deal and light it up. I don't give a shit if it tastes good or not. I lied to you, Brian. I have one more quick question. Sure. I'm, I live in this world of virtual work now, and these people make fun of me of what I wear on the bottom half when I'm we're on so here. I'm so disappointed. Right have now. you ever, do you ever like, when we see you on Fox, are you ever just half dressed? No, but I will yes. tell you who is. But I will tell you who is. When you see him watch it in Fox NASCAR coverage, Michael Waltrip, always half dressed. He's half dressed. He is That's the tallest awesome. guy in the show. He's the tallest guy in the show, so they have to shoot everybody up. Yes. So he's, he's got a suit he's jacket. Never wearing pants. Never. He never has a full program done. That's I because he. It. That's because he knows how to be cool, and he probably also does not eat fajitas. <laughs> I've been. In, I, I, I've been in their booth. I'm so fucking sour before. right now. Yeah. Like this yeah. is the worst. This has been. This, has this been is the what worst always night. happens. This is why I wait to the end of the show to ask this because Lyle now is on suicide watch. I'm fucking home. derailed right now. Like this. I've I was, honest, sure. I, to I was sure. I was sure that Brian Lones would be like, you know what? I don't like going to the Mexican restaurant and coming out smelling like a butthole. But guess what? Here's Brian. He, he wants yeah. to just breathe it in. Yeah, breathe it in. Chich and Chong, the fucking fajita juice. Yeah. We what? talked about Un it before you got I mean, on the show tonight, Brian. Unbelievable. He was he was certain. And you'll I be said, changing valve springs for Jr. Gray in a year or two when your fucking career takes a tank. <laughs> Dickhead. Yeah, maybe, I'll be, maybe I'll be living in a house with 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 uh, open studs and a concrete block wall and a pallet. Fucking fine. Hey, that hey, Noel, well, is that your she shed? What are you doing over there? It might He's be, but vacation. you know what? You know what? Yeah. One thing's for certain: we don't eat fajitas like, in this motherfucker. Looks like looks like Bob Ross's painting studio. Maybe there's a easel on a canvas. Maybe it somewhere. is. Some happy little Why trees, loans. happy little clouds. Minus loans, the I fajitas. Think you're my hero. I think you're right. Bang. Though. You can oh, bang but... shift yourself right now to the fajita eating contest, you <laughs> fucking dick. Contest. Well, we've got Man. miles where I was last Whoa. week in Greece. Boy. Uh, Man. Um, uh, so anyway, I'm Brian, thank you so much hurt. for coming on the show. Hey, Brian, <laughs> lose my number. Let me ask you a question. When you walked into that room, do you ever say, put the lotion in the basket in that particular room? Have <laughs> you ever yelled that out? Put the lotion no, in the basket. I, it looks like, no, that, it looks I, like the type of room I that something the, like might happen. I do the, I do the squirting. I do the lotion <laughs> squirt. 
I am a well, lady. Well, your beard just look it's an inch shorter than what it was earlier. I'm just letting you know that. You know what? It may be an inch shorter, <laughs> but it's 10 or 12 longer than yours, you pussy. I started growing it to uh, three days ago. Anyways, oh, I, I'm ladies. Sure you did. Ladies, ladies. Faced at right the after you ate your fajitas, right? Yeah, you flew your airplane over there. Your oh RC my god. Plane. You well, thank together. you for coming on. We really appreciate it. We're going to get Lyle back up before you go. I don't appreciate you want to say anything to you've done tonight, Lone. <laughs> if I could figure out how to mute him, I would. Uh, Here's the, only, the last thing I'll say is this. The last thing I'll say is this. I honestly appreciate coming on. We had a blast. You guys are you guys are fun, hilarious, great questions, great conversation. Um, and hey, just just support the sport. If you're watching this thing, it doesn't matter if it's your local track. Doesn't matter if you like NHRA. It doesn't matter if you hate NHRA. If you like this, that, the other thing. Just get to the drag strip because at the bottom end of the day, we need these tracks to be healthy. We need these tracks to be open. We need these tracks to be supported. So it doesn't matter if you're like me or anything we do, just get to your local drag strip, whether it's with your car, go there, buy some beers, hang out in the fan, the stands, just do something, but support the sport. That's it. Amen. And I like it. We if love you. you. Like 25. Me, come watch me race. And if you hate me, oh, come you, watch me get beat. Y'all been, y'all been muting me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> While uh, Matt did. No, well, I was just going to say, when you roll brother, the game, we really, we really and they say you. they want $25 for you to test and tune, stop bitching about it. Just pay it. Go buy a cheeseburger and a hot dog and a side yeah, of fries fine. and do it. I mean, do it. Yeah. yeah. Loans, thank you for coming on, brother. And don't buy the fajitas. And don't, we'll see you in a week, and uh, we'll be cool. calling the beer chugging contest. Thank you I'll for coming there. on, brother. We love you. I'll thank see you in a couple days. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Wow, what a great guest. Lone is what awesome. an amazing fucking guest. I have well, to be so bad. Very, very few times do we get the inside perspective on on where uh, different mindsets on different sides of the sport. And I like hearing folks that are inside the tower just as much as I like hearing folks that are outside the tower. Um, <laughs> thank you, Bob. We appreciate it. Matt likes this. Um, there you go, Matt. Matt, we've raised like $192 or something for you. <laughs> so you got some cheese. Um, thank you guys for watching. I don't know where CE went, but she's peeing. Um, this has been a two hour show and, uh, we thank you guys for watching Lyle's on suicide watch. I'm, <laughs> we'll I'm, see. I'm very are upset. we, are we doing, I'm coming. I'm coming. I had to pee okay, so we're bad. not, we're not rolling. Are we doing, uh, are we shaking baking from Brainerd? I'm not going to, I don't, quit. I'm not going to be there Tuesday and I'm not even there till Wednesday. No, nah, I may quit. This could be going Look, this I don't think it has to be a Tuesday thing for that because it's going to be, well, well, fuck, it would. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be there Tuesday. So I think. Just uh, make it a fajita Friday. I think we will not shake and bake next Tuesday, but we may go live from Brainerd. Uh, I think and we have should. like an intro shake and bake show. So keep an eye on our YouTube channel. If we're going to do that, we'll try to schedule a little bit ahead of time. That way, you know that uh, you know you got some stuff to 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 watch. So somebody asked what shirt I was wearing. Eat, sleep, race. In this, I'm over it. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> close this out. Help me. Uh, I thought.